What's happening, people? Welcome to Tottenham Away, the best place to be in town if you're a Spurs fan. Like, subscribe, follow the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Great to have you here. If you don't support Spurs, you're also welcome. Well, well, well. Uh, last week, <laughs> we were on a high. Uh, we've got our Tottenham back, flying, best performance of the season, and we've done a complete 180. Back to square one, it feels. Been here before. Worst performance of the season. Um, but look, we're going to get into it. We're going to break it down. We're, we're also going to cover a lot of other things that came up during the week that we need to discuss. We've also got um, Ryan from Tottenham on Tour joining us for a bit of the show today. He's asked to come on. No worries. But before we talk, <laughs> before we talk about how we are winning in life, everyone. Iggy, are you winning in life? Every day, my friend. Every day. Every day. Even the worst day, still winning. JP, are you winning <laughs> in life? It was a nice weekend. I got some special time with my family. I got to. I'm happy in life. Let's just put it that way. I just want to. I just want to make sure that Ryan's stopping to pick up passengers at the same time. I finished. I finished. This is me driving home. I nah, done my bro. job. We could have done with a bus. You've, defense, you've done your fair. job. You know, I wish I wish our players did their job. But... Could have done with Jose's bus. Oh, mate, tell me about it. Right, we'll go into hey, it. Hey, how you doing, Ryan, by the way? You all right? You good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, winning at life. Uh, got a good job. Newcastle away is booked up. Um, Spurs are still Spurs. <laughs> What more can we say? 
Keep it going. Let, let, let's, let's go to the biggest winner in life, Maz. With the champion. Mate. The champion of life. Mate, I think Brian said the best. We've got the Skywalk. We've got the Stadium. We've got Chicken King. We've got Chicken Royale. We're winning at life. What more could you want, Maz? What more can we want? Don't hey, forget on. the F1 underground. We've got F1. Yep, we've got F1. So we've got, we've got mm. activities at the top of the stadium and F1 at the bottom of the stadium. And, and, and nothing on the football pitch. <laughs> FFP Kings. Activities on the top, activities just on the details. Bottom. Just details. It's, that part is just a, details. There's a retractable football pitch, which is pretty cool. I think. I'm looking Two forward pitches. to our uh, financial statements at the end of the year to show how rich we are. Really looking forward to that. <laughs> Lee. Rub it in everyone's faces. <laughs> Lee, with, with that top, that bright top, you look like you're a champion in life. You're a champion <laughs> life, in life. Uh, Completed it, mate. Completed it, mate. <laughs> this is the there's most no, subdued start to a show. We've there's, no, there's, no, there's no, there's no, there's no such <laughs> thing as losing. Just learn. We'll uh, learn from this. We will learn from this. Don't there's worry, no, guys. There's, Tottenham will learn you, from you, this. You don't lose. You learn in life. There's no such oh, thing we'll, as losing. We'll, we'll come back better next week. Trust us. Oh, no, we're not even playing no. next week. We're not playing next week, so you need not worry. No, we will. Oh, we will. No, do you know what, Iggy? What you just said there reminds me of the videos they put online of the players training mm. saying, we we will learn, coming back stronger. Uh, we, we, we we are working together. Work in progress. <laughs> progress. Listen, let's quickly say hello to one in the chat. Big up the disabled team, channel members. Hope you're good. El Saeed. Got Lookman as well. Swifty. Up, Rob Belcher, big up to you. Uh, Lee's in the house. John George, how you doing? Tony's in the building. We've big got up, up, get that fraud Arteta out of my club. Swifty, Ian's in the house. SVLBG, Jamie Git, Norman's in the building. Uh, Adrian, welcome back to the chat. We, fa we found a way to unblock you after Iggy blocked you. After Iggy blocked you. <laughs> I cannot apologise enough. Sorry, Adrian, but welcome back. Tom's in the building. George's in the building. We've got Ray the Yid, big up. We've got Jonez, yeah, CDC, right. 1205. I think this is a new channel member. Big up to you. Thanks for joining. We've got Hasper, LA007, C to the fourth. Uh, Phil P, woo! woo! He's in the house. As Mark, Language Angels, big up to Language Angels. We've got Tom, JJ's in the house. Oi, oi. DJ. Ah, Marcus, big up. Mark, rhythmic renegade. What name that is? The rhythmic renegade. I like that. That's a good. That sounds like a good record label. Rhythmic renegade records. I might take that. Uh, Gary's in the building. Big up, Gary Rathish. How are you doing, Spurs fan? Dan, George, George, is in the building. Blimey. Big up, guys. Big up, everyone. Nova Gen, Edward Talks, Wayne Holland, Spurs King, Gigs, Mr. Post Office, Full Works. Hope it's not Matty Cash. Cash. Uh, Richard Knight, Scott's in the house, Lappers82. Good evening, good afternoon. Daniela. Kukabura. Kukabura. Spurs72, Comrade Hey doing Ants in the house. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're tuned in from. We've got 230 people tuned in already. Uh, make sure you like the channel. Make sure you follow Tottenham on tour as well. That's Ryan's channel with Brian Daigle and the gang over there. Uh, and finally, a few more just coming in there. Dingo Yid, Daniela, Pinzad, Jack Pierce, and Barrett. Big up to you guys as well. All right, lads. We Big might up. as well get into the game. Um, I, I did start to cover it on Saturday, the late night show, but we ended up going into 10 different um, other conversations. So we'll try and do it tonight. So uh, before we start, by the way, I just want to let everyone know, I ran a poll on Twitter. Some of you take things a bit too seriously. Okay, this was in jest. Um, and the poll was, is it time to change our club motto from to there is to do and going forward use we win in life? On Twitter, it was even. Some of you said yes, some of you said no, some of you said motto's irrelevant. On YouTube, most of you said no, don't change it. 
Uh, a third of you said change it, and a quarter said don't change it. Oh, sorry, no, the, the, the mod is irrelevant, but there you go. I thought I'd share that with you. Read All right, guys, so <laughs> if you don't know, we oh, that's the wrong one. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the half time. We lost 3 0. We lost 3 0 uh, to Fulham. None of us predicted a loss. I think we all predicted a comfortable win. Some of us said it'll be a tight game. Um, going into the game, it was a bit of a Champions League uh, showdown where we could catch Villa and surpass them. And Sky Sports said that 62% chance of us finishing in the top four. Villa 34%, Man United and the rest not really in it. So we expected a win, especially after the Aston Villa game. The starting lineup exact exactly the same as the Villa. Starting lineup, except Dragusin came in. Some people calling him Dracusin. Uh, Dracusin, he came in instead of the injured Mickey van der Ven. Bear in mind, Vicky, Mickey van der Ven, when he plays, we have a 66% win ratio. When he doesn't play, it drops to 44%. So we are going to discuss how important Mickey van der Ven is and why are we so dependent on one player for this system to work in a defensive phase. In fact, guys, let's start there. Let's just Let's just go there rather than me just rambling. Why are we so dependent on one centre-back at Spurs for this system to work? Why, why, why can't we adjust? Why can't other players fill that void? Why is there just one centre-back that makes these ridiculous recovery runs, puts in the block and challenge and saves us time after time after time? And if he's injured, the win ratio literally tumbles down to 44%. Who, who wants to take that one on? Because we are so dependent on this guy. It's ridiculous. It's, it's almost like we... From being Harry Kane FC, we've become um, Van der Ven FC. He's the only one with pace, right? Literally, pace to burn he's got. And the way we play that system, if as we play so high, you need that recovery time. And I don't think, I don't think the others have really got it, right? Because he's quite rigid in playing that system, playing that formation. They've all got their individual tasks and jobs to do. And his literally is, because of his speed, is coming back and sweeping up. It's like we don't yeah. really have anyone to score goals up front. <laughs> but yeah, but see, how, how have we got into this situation where the way we play, the way we set up, the way we go about our business, we are that massively dependent on this one man? What what would have happened if we didn't sign Van der Ven? Then what? Where would we be? What if it was just Dragusin and Romero? Where would we be? Mid table, eighth. Well, I guess. I mean, personally, I would say he's he obviously has his formation right, and I don't know if he would have changed it slightly without having any pace in there, because if you think about it, at the start of the season, we didn't even have Dragusin, right? So whoever they would have got in, they obviously targeted someone who's got pace on them so that they could play the system. Now, whether in the back of their minds, they're also looking at, I heard the other day somewhere, that they were looking at a another centre-back, whether it's another pacey person. Um, I can't remember who it was, to be honest, and I didn't bother looking into it that much. But um, ideally, you would think that they do need cover and they do need someone else with pace at the back there. You know what everyone else thinks? <coughs> For me, how do you feel about this? Because we 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 shipped in. Let's let's be right. We shipped in three comfortably against Fulham, and if and, and they should have put a couple more. They had a goal disallowed. This could have been five six nil up. It really could have. Look for me, Van der Ven. Amongst all the like the characteristics that we we know that he has, he's strong, he's quick, he recovers really well, super well. He gives he gives the forward a, a head start and he catches up. He also one one thing that has not has not must not be forgotten. He sets the tone as well. Like sometimes even with the fifty, he he like he crunch tackles at, at players as well. So he, he, there's an element of tone that he sets within the team. Um, and I felt like that wasn't there um, on the you know in the weekend. It wasn't. We was never at the races. It never felt at any point of the game that it was in a balance. And I think what, um, like I said, what Van der Ven has all his attributes. I think I think he has that side, that leadership side, that, that setting the tone. That that that, that he, you know that that he, I think Vicario does that as well, really well. By the way. Um, 
he he you know, they said it's, but we don't have enough of those players in it within the team um and when you when you already have you know you're scarce of that and then one comes to not be there and plus you're having a player that takes his place who's on his first debut start for the club you know you can see where the difficulties lie by the way i i do think people have gone way overboard on on dragusin I don't think he had a brilliant game, of course. But then again, who did? You know, you have to ask yourself that question. Did we all have a good game where Dragusin was the only one that didn't have one? Then you can maybe say, OK, but when the team doesn't help a player that's making his senior start from, the, from you know, at the club, it, is, it becomes very difficult. He, he has his share of, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sparing him of, of criticism. I'm just saying that people have just piled it in too much. Um on him and like I said if if maybe he had made his debut with Van der Ven it might have been a different story you don't know we'll have to give the guy a chance but yeah just um, listen he's got leadership vibes he's got captain vibes he is by far our best defender at the club right now and like I said he's only I think the Euros are, are going to put him in an even better light and I think that's where you will see just how good he is as a defender on international stage, not just at Tottenham. Guys in the chat, yeah. just to let you know, with, with no Van one is Dijk blaming Dragusin for this loss. No one's saying that. The question I'm putting forward is, whenever Van der Ven is out, whether it's Ben Davies, Emerson Royale, whoever comes in, yeah, this is the drop-off. These, these stats you're seeing on the screen have got nothing to do with Dragusin. These were the stats before Dragusin played against yeah, him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right? So this isn't about blaming Dragusin. I'm just saying, no matter what we do, when Van der Ven is out of the team, we seem to have problems. This is where I'll ask a quick question and then I'll be quiet. Is is that, is this not necessarily on Ange, but should he not take things like this into consideration? And my prime example would be, knowing that we don't have pace, do we need to be so high? A couple of weeks ago, we didn't have a Dogi and we didn't have um, Porro, right? And we played with Emerson and Davies. And he asked them to do exactly the same things as Porro and a Dogi would do. Well, that's never going to happen, right? It's never going to happen. What happened? I'm no, sure no, we lost not. that game. Yeah. Right? Then, then we change Ab it, JP. We bring crucified. players that can do it. That's the yeah, whole point. He's we, setting we the tone that this is how we play. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's fine. And currently, we don't have the players, all right? Understandably. We don't have that pacey Van der Ven, um substitute. We don't have the players that of the type of what Edogi and Poro give us. Yeah, but so we can't ask the at, manager to adapt, man. At some, at some point, he has to be a bit clever, though. Right, because otherwise you're just asking for these results. I don't agree with that, Iggy, because I, I would say that Jose was actually quite adaptable considering he's a more defensive manager. Um, you know, we used no, to. No, I'm not, I'm not coup, saying, not, 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 I'm not saying, right, I'm not saying not adapt to situation. There is an element of that. I, I just don't think you should compromise your style of play as a manager because you don't have the players. You have the players, and if you don't, if, they, if the, the players that you have, it, as backups are not are not of your um, requirements. They ship them out. Bring the players. Hey, up. Yeah, but you can't do that mid-season, can you? All right. Can I just throw something into this then? When Pochettino was manager, we lost Harry Kane for the run-up to the Champions League final, semi-finals, quarter-finals. We lost Harry Kane. What did he do? He played Son and Moro as a front two and changed it, and we ended up causing problems and got to a final. So. Is there a is 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 there a genuine question here where Anne just said to us, "This is yeah, this is how we play, mate. You know, this is how we are." I, I've got nothing against this, but we are going to get these heavy hits. The same thing happened at Bournemouth. We were four 0 down, not Bournemouth, Brighton. We were four 0 down at Bournemouth. I, I, I'm 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 of the camp that I'm actually getting a little bit less convinced with Angie's uh, formation, um, and and adapting to to um, the deficiencies in the team is what I would like. Um, Michael actually mentioned it in, in the in the comments, Michael from Poland, 
Um, he stole my thunder a little bit, but it's, it's and I mentioned it on Saturday night. It's, it's because we're so narrow that when the teams play that that ball over the top and we get caught further up the pitch, it's always down the wings generally, and then and then you know bad stuff happens, right? Um, I, I would like to see if you know. In answer to your original question, still with Van der Ven, I think he's absolute mustard. Um, I've said this before, I'm not going to repeat it. Um, and the whole, I would even even say um, that Romero, to be honest with you, doesn't look anywhere near as good when Van der Ven is not there. And I think even if Romero wasn't in the team, I think Van der Ven would still look good. And that slightly worries me a little bit. Ryan, what's your thoughts? You were at the game, right? You, did you go to Fulham away? <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, he's picked up a passenger, isn't he? He's an Uber driver. He's an Uber driver, really. <laughs> oh, bless Very. you. Ryan. Thank you. Yep. Did you, did you turn on just to sneeze? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I was, it was on mute. I muted him now. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm asking you a question. Did you go to the Fulham game? If you did, what was the general feeling about kind I of I didn't Van go Ven? to the Fulham game. I didn't go All to right. the Fulham game. Uh, I watched it from home. Um overall look, um we didn't turn up. It was a shocking performance. Um there's not much you can say on it apart from it's one of them games where under Ange, look at the start of a new dawn you want to speak about. Uh I've said it before, I've ri- I wrote the season off the minute Kane was sold. Um, we're going to take these bumps in the road this season. All I can hope is that next season, we sort of, Ange has answers to these questions where the adaptability can come in. So I understand why he's sticking to his beliefs this year. Maybe he's learning on the job. And if you're learning, you don't want to change things up too much. You want to stick to your know-how. Ryan, then- Ryan, hold on, hold on. Ryan, sorry, Ryan, one minute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He's not Arteta, whose first job is Arsenal, learning on the job. He's been in the game for 20 years. He's a, he's a yes, veteran of the game. What's he learning on the job? He's learning He's learning the, the difference between working in the J-League and the Scottish League compared to the Premier League. Arteta, okay. first okay. job is in the Premier League. It's, it's a completely different kettle of fish. Uh, Pep had to learn his first year on the job that he couldn't play tiki-taka with the players yet. And he got the players in. A Klopp, Klopp's first year was woeful. The football was woeful. He even said to Liverpool fans that I'm learning on the job in this league because it's completely different tactics. Tactics. It's a completely different style. Completely different way of playing the game. If you compared to other leagues around the world and other leagues around Europe, the the the, the quickness, the pace that the Premier League is played at is like nothing else. Um, but overall, look, Van der Ven, we miss massively. Saar went missing. He, he's due a bad game. Let, let, let's say it is. Basuma was woeful. The doggy was diabolical. Like the doggy is protected so much by this fan base, it is scary. Um, he he's got a lot to learn uh, defensively and offensively. Um, and the wingers were shocking. Uh, and Son was invisible. Apart from that, we had a good game. <laughs> Apart from that, we had a good game. Oh, my God. We've got a super chat from Soul Boy. He says, boys, you have to look at and We've also got uh, Carl Patrick, big up, channel member, 18 months. Does anyone here does anyone here agree with this super chat? But we do need to look at and Or is it, like, uh, too you, early? I think calm down. The I think, uh, Q Lee. Go on, Lee. Listen. I'll I, I tell you what I'm seeing, right? So the, the Fulham match, let's just knock this whole high line thing on the head out. Get that out of the way because it was nothing to do with the high line. They're three goals. Um, <clears throat> I would put a little bit of naivety on Dragusin in his defending and, and, and working with Romero, but that's it's his first game. He's, he's got to get those things out of his system, right? This, this, you, you've got to, what, what I'm tending to find, I, this isn't a really unpopular opinion, but I really don't care anymore i'm that down in the dumps um the villa game for me still i still think that made us look better than we are 
because you put the same two team, uh, same team against two different teams, and the outcome is completely different. I think Emery got it wrong, and <clears throat> we punished them for it, and we got a result. Great, but Fulham did he, he tried to do exactly what Wolves did, and it was paying off for them. Now the high line for me wasn't the issue, but what I'm noticing is that you've got to start looking at the reluctance of a manager to tweak, not change, just tweak ever so slightly the way that he that, that he, he does the tactics within the match, right? Because he did it against Wolves and they exploited it. You could see it against Fulham, although they ne didn't necessarily exploit it, you could see it. For me, I think he gave a little bit more credit to Villa because we didn't seem to be as high as we were against the other two teams. I personally still think that we are still playing five yards too far forward. This high line is five yards too high up. And I'll tell you why I say that. It's because yeah, when Lee, you... Lee, hold on, hold on. Said, let me finish. You just said the high line is not the issue. No, no, no. But, the, but, this, but when someone said, you know, you've got, you've got, a, you've got a spot, uh, start questioning Ange. For me, a high line is a high line but then there's an extremely high line. And that's exactly what you saw at some points against Fulham. We were literally on the halfway line and they are players in our half on their own. I know they were just like trying to do the offside trap or whatever, but for me, that's too high. And, and I think the problem with that, it compresses the field up so much that you then don't have the ability to pass the ball around midfield because the, the, everyone's so compact. I think if you just drop off another five yards, just pull a bit of five yards or eight yards of space, it just gives a bit more, more room to manoeuvre and more room to put those passes in. And this is where you've got, you've got a question. We've, this has happened to us. It's not the first time. A Wolves wasn't the second time it's happened to us. You've got to ask if he's so adamant that he's going to stick to his guns and yet it keeps failing or we keep getting exposed then surely you, at some point he's got to go right maybe this doesn't work in the premier league the way i play because there's so many teams with quick players that maybe i just need to tweak it ever so slightly just tell the lads do you know what just just drop five yards or whatever that's what he seems to be reluctant to do and people are going to start questioning that if you see it week in, week out, you're going to have to start questioning it. So, you know, if, if this happens again and it happens against the likes of, you know, Luton or Nottingham Forest, then you've definitely, definitely got to start questioning it. No, and don't get me wrong. I don't want him out. I don't want anything like that. But maybe he just needs to have a look at himself and just tweak it ever so slightly so that it works for the Premier League. Uh, Lee, to, to, to add to your um, analysis... I think as well, another problem with this high line um, is that when we are in the final third, it compresses that space so much. And, and the fact that we're so narrow as a team, which is really weird because we've got three front players and you would expect Johnson or, or, or Vina to go really wide and hug the byline. And you would expect the inverted fullbacks to support that. And they don't. Everyone just crowds in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Although shift, right? one good, one good, one good thing to come out of the Fulham match, we finally had a shot from outside the box. Benton Coradico. That's the first wow. one I've seen in about three games that I can remember. It's just it's and, absolute madness the amount of shots that, we don't take outside the box. And that's why Lee, we won in life. We won. Simple. Outside. We've got our Tottenham back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 it's it's amazing to see even in the comments now tonight, and I, it's not just tonight that I've been seeing it it's for turning. the last few days. I think it's, the, the it's, crowd it's, are turning. Yes, turning. yes, in regards to Ange, and it's the thing is, it, it's, 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 it's directed, it's directed, as always, yeah. as always, the manager, man. Everyone's just like turning, turning the screws on the manager. What is he? Uh, seven months in the job, and it's like it's already, it's already started. I'm like. I am mystified. No. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I'm not. I'm not saying he's he's not he's not subject to an element of criticism. Of course, he is, man. When we win, we praise. When we lose, we criticize. So, I don't think. I, I don't think the fans are turning on him. Um, I don't think. No, I think they're criticizing I, I, I think, him. I, I, I don't the, think the fans are turning on him. But uh, but I don't check Twitter. So yeah. Um, yeah the, so, the, the thing is, Maz, right? Okay. It's borderline, Maz. Believe right. it. For me, 
I saw fans' reaction to when we lost to Chelsea, when everyone was criticising, why did he play so high up with nine men? I Look, we, we got why Ange did it. We, we spoke about it. Some, some agree, some don't. It's opinions. But I saw the beginnings of people questioning this manager. And I remember tweeting saying, and I, and I, sc- and I screenshot and I shared it saying, look at these fans. They're saying Ange out. This is how it begins. And then people said, no, it's not. You're making out to be something it's not. I said, no, I'm not. I've been here before. In you fact, know, you went on Tottenham it. TV and said the same, and you said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. I went on Tottenham TV and I said, all these people that are questioning Ange, you need to park it. And I defended him. <clears throat> but what, what what is happening now is they're not, they're not Ange out, but they're criticising his tactics. But But the hypocrisy here is, or the contradiction, whichever word you want to use, Ange has come out and clearly said, I'm not changing it. This is who we are, his words. So if this is who we are and he's not going to change it, all this criticism will eventually boil into anger and frustration that he doesn't change it, even though he's told us that. So it's, we can criticise, not us, but fans. You know, we, we want Ange to work. We, we, this channel backs every manager, even when the fans turn against them. But is it not the same the thing? Fans frustrating... out and criticizing him when the manager's not going to change his ways, and he's told us he's not changing. But Conte was like that. I mean, what is different to what Conte was doing and what Andrew's doing? Conte didn't change. And well, he, so he, he had, had back. yeah, he and he had a far, 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 far worse squad, I think, in general than what Andrew's had because of that he had, back four. He, he had the worst back four I can remember. Don't you think? Well, yeah, yeah. Dyer, Longley, <sighs> and... Uh, and Davies, it? Serge Aurier. Did they, oh, no, no, he didn't uh, have Serge Aurier. He had Paul... Uh, and Emerson. Emerson. Emerson, well, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he, he also had, had Harry Kane. He also had Harry Kane, which is... Yeah, elite. but you can use that as a caveat for anything. You know, we could... Uh, we could... It can use that excuse for anything. We've got yeah, the scar. Yeah, because you've got Harry Kane. No, but what I'm saying is, we we Brendan Johnson missed the one on one from six yards. He missed an open goal. Timo Werner missed the goal of the, the open goal of the century. Harry Kane scores all three. Or, no, Harry okay, Kane scores but, all three of those goals. So it's free. Uh, free. Charlison is, be- is uh, Levy's replacement, right? So we've got a uh, got to support him. Yeah, well, he came him. on and missed as well. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering where where this goes because the the, the moans and the groans about and it is about it's two things that. So, tell me if I'm wrong. The two kind of moans that we're hearing in the fan base is one, high line, high line, high line. And the other one is, he takes too long to make the subs. Why did you bring on three players at 3-0? Surely you do it at half time or as soon as we go 2-0 down, make your changes. They're, they're the gripes. Unless you've heard of any any other kind Go of, on, Iggy. You haven't spoken, other mate. Moans. Go on. <sighs> Look, the high line thing, man, we keep saying it. I... Uh, Listen, I, I agree with Lee, man. I don't think that's too much of an issue. It's just that, you know, some teams play low block. They literally defend outside the, the area. Other managers, like him, he wants to do the other, the completely opposite, right up there. For me, the, the biggest the biggest failings on Sunday or Saturday, whenever we played, was the, was our midfield, man. Like, normally, that's not, normally the best part of our team. The most, the most, like, you look at how we played against Aston Villa, and how we played in that midfield, exactly the same players as well, you know. And the following week, with the same team, pretty much, I don't think we changed um, uh, any of it. It was, it was, it was completely different. The, it was the mindset. Just it, we didn't. The thing is, there wasn't a spell. There wasn't a turning point in the game where it went from good to bad, or you know, bad to. This was just completely like from minute one to 90 plus minute was a, the mindset wasn't there we failed at turning up in the game we didn't we didn't there was a couple of interesting battles like you know Robinson versus Kuluzeski Palinia versus Madison I started to see that but these guys though Robert uh, Robinson won against Kuluzeski Palinia won against Madison we lost we started to lose battles on the pitch and we never really and truly recovered to recovered from that the, uh, the, the, you know, then the answer is, you know, why are we making a substitute too, too, too late? 
I don't know, man. There's the quality that really we have a bit more options at the moment on the bench. Yes, perhaps better options, but are they really better than what we already have in the in the, in the first eleven? You know, arguably a Benton could perhaps, but he hadn't been playing well. Although he did well coming on against Villa, and I thought he did well coming on against um, Fulham uh, too. But then you look beyond that. You've got Gio who's coming back. I, I don't think he has he has the manager's confidence anymore. And then who else came back? Hoiberg. You know, the only thing I can say about Hoiberg is like he comes on with the right attitude. You know, he had a go at Pedro Porro, I think, for for not putting a tackle in high up the line. He was going to him, you should go straight in. But that was a, a bit too late. Perhaps in these games, we should bring Hoiberg in, into the side. Perhaps, you know, you've got to utilise these, these these players like Hoiberg, who has that little bit of a, a know-how against the likes of Fulham. Mix it up a little bit. But Essentially, man, essentially, we was not at the races. It was a terrible, terrible day at the office when you look at it. Because there's nothing really positive still, other than the goalkeeper, yet again. Who can we say outfield players perform? Yeah, do, you know, do, do, do you know what was alarming about this result? I'll tell you what was alarming for me. <clears throat> so, I sat there, I watched it. I got angry because I knew we were going to lose this at 2-0. Well, as soon as it went 2-0, I just knew because the way we were playing... What angered me the most is that this season, we've said countless times we don't know how to break a low block. We struggle against a low block. We don't know what to do. And it's always a last minute winner or we end up getting sucker punched on the counter like Wolves did to us and we lose 2-1. We just struggle. Wolves did not low block us. They came at us and they ripped. They did not sit deep and we, you know, pinned them back and they counterattacked. They came at us. They ran the midfield. Paulinha and Lukic bossed Bissouma, Madison and Saar. Absolutely owned them. Iwobi, Iwobi had our winger on toast. He ate him alive. And then the back two, they were disjointed. And that moon has got him twice. He had all the time in the world to steady himself and score. So my anger for this game, it comes from we didn't lose to low block, which we've always said is our Achilles heel. We lost to a team that played football. What's going to happen when we play Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, who play football? Then what? That, can you see, this This wasn't like the, the other losses. This was a team that's mid-table, 12, <laughs> who played football better than us. I, I, I don't think we mentally, we, we, we were mentally approached the game really well. And it's, and it's what surprised me, it was on the back of the win against Aston Villa. We just completely came from a 4-0 win um, at Villa Park and, and, and you think right we've got to go it's another away game so we, we was going away from there you know those games we played at home it was about three or four games at home we had a really good win first away win in goodness how long at Aston Villa and you think right now we're on a little we, we're going to go into the Fulham game with more confidence and I don't know it's just for me it was a mentality I don't know if we thought that we was going to walk um, or walk over Fulham I don't know why we would think that because Fulham had been picking up some decent results. But I don't know why. We just wasn't there. I never got the feeling watching that game that we were truly there. And like I said, and then all of a sudden, as I mentioned earlier, we started losing. The the, the battles that I thought were going to be really good ones, slowly, slowly, I felt that they were winning. They were winning the, the individual battles. And I thought, well, if, if Madison's not winning against Polinia, Robertson's beating Kulizewski, like you said, he will be. And he start one or two. A striker is, 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 is making our two centre-backs look weak. You think to yourself, well, well where are we going to win these battles, man? And we, we didn't. And our forward line, like you said, a, a team against... Uh, we, 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 we couldn't... We, none of the three really could get going. So, when you've got that situation in midfield and the situation in the forward line, they're not getting, they're not getting past that back four. You think this, of course, Tossin had a good game as well. So, I think, and then on the other end, they're they creating chances and scoring as well. You're like, well, this, this, this could be a, I remember thinking that, watching the game, thinking, this is going to be a long night. A long night watching that watching that game, and, I, and like I said, it surprises me because it came on the back of a really good win I, at Villa Park. I'm just not yeah. convinced that at at the formation and the tactics. I've seen enough of it because I don't think we're playing better football than we have done in the past. 
and I'm not talking about Conte or Mourinho. I'm talking about obviously Poch and, and Redknapp. We have lots of possession, but it doesn't look like we're properly in control, dictating play. We rely on the other teams to attack us so we can exploit the space in behind, which is, you could argue, was well, in that similar type of tactic to what Conte was doing in terms of the counter-attacking type of football. Um, we're really narrow. We can only score with tappings. Uh, we don't shoot from outside the box. Uh, you know, our, our, whilst individually we've got good defenders, as soon as you take Van der Ven out, we don't look anywhere near as good which is worrying, really, because isn't Romero meant to be our Rolls-Royce defender? And it's not proving that way. Van der Ven is proving to be the Rolls-Royce defender. I'm not, and I'm not though, I like Maz Romero. Holden. I don't think he's a bad player. I'm just, I'm just speaking my but, mind. But Maz, uh, just, yeah. just, to, just to defend this a little bit here, because just a bit of context. When Romero and Van der Ven, Van der, oh my God, when, when Romero and Mickey start together and Adogi and Poro start, that back four, has not lost a single game this season when they start. Except for Chelsea, but we know that's an anomaly. No one's beaten them when those four start. So maybe it's yeah, there's a point. synergy. There's a synergy that but is I'm good. not just referring to whether we're winning or losing. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing when we're playing football. Right? So so we ha we've had a couple of games where we've been convincing for me in terms of a win. That's not enough. That really is not enough. And I think when we lose, that's why we all sort of have a little bit of a meltdown because I think everyone can see that we're not really playing well. Not really. We have all the stats back us up, but they don't they, they don't correlate that well to what you're seeing on the eye. Can we, as a fan base, keep a manager for two years? At least two years. Yeah, but I don't think I, I don't think we're calling for him to go out. To be honest, which no, is but no, we want him back. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. It, it, it's just the even in the comment section. Is it time to question Ange and all this? This year, this first year was always going to be like it was. It, I don't want to use the term rebuild, but it was like I can't think of the right uh, the right wording when you free just hit. yeah, it's, it's a free hit first year. Whatever happens, happens. Especially when Kane was sold. We were all thinking relegation, like I even said it, if it wasn't for Mickey Van der Ven, I put us in a relegation battle, 100%. We're, we're 12th to 16th without Mickey Van der Ven. End of story. We just need to ride through this season, ride through the pain. Painful rebuild is what Poch said. We are now going through it. Just need to relax, get through the season. No fights inside the stadium. No, no fighting outside the stadium. Just get through it. And start next season afresh and really build on what we've done this season. Because right. we can't right. go for questioning a manager. Because when we question a manager and his tactics, you start thinking about it. Is this manager any good? Then we're thinking, well, we want better football, blah, blah. I mean, there's got to be a point where we just sit down and think, well, we're not at the level of Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. We're just not at this moment in time. And we are not going to be at that level if we keep on chopping and changing. If, who, who, who are we going to bring in if we sack, sack Ange? Nobody is touching this football club that is of an elite level coach. Nagelsmann has turned us down numerous times. Um, Graham Potter turned us down. Everyone is going to, no elite manager on Jose, Klopp, anything, anyone like that is going to touch us. So it's only going to be a level down from Ange. It really is. So hold on, one minute, one minute. This is like, this is like me hearing, um, it's all right for the chairman to tell you we're the richest club in London. It's all right for the chairman to tell you we're the FFP champions. It's all right for the chairman to build a one billion pound stadium with multiple revenue streams. It's okay to give him 24 years, but we can't, you can't have what you want. Take these crumbs. Like, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. The ownership, no, we, we that's know. How, that's, that's how I heard yeah. that. You're saying to me, be patient because no other manager wants this job. Why does no other manager want this job? Who because the answer, we know why. We know why. Right. But so why should I we, settle for that then? Why we, should I as a fan settle for that? Because if we go go about and go angry, all, all the chairman's going to do, because this fan base is so fragmented on Levy in, Levy out, Beyonce in, Beyonce out, we, we, we never come together on anything that all the managers, all the chairman's going to do is go, okay, you want the manager gone? Fine. I'll sack him and I'll bring him. And, and, and he just 
sweeps it under the carpet again. We as a fan base need to unite on this manager. End of but story. I think we do, though. I think, oh, I think, I think we all we'll back There's already question marks. You've seen it on Twitter. The Ange out, Ange out has started after one game, after one Fulham defeat. Okay, It was always oh, wow. going to be a roadblock. With it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pattern of losses that's involved defensive frailties. I think a lot of fans... Listen, you guys tell me. I'm just telling you what I, what I see. I think a lot of fans think this manager's naive defensively. Yeah, he probably is. But uh, at, at the moment, we just we, we need to ride it out. We need to ride it out, give the manager some sort of time. The, the fan base give the time, the ownership give the backing in terms of money and transfer how, spend. How long would you say, Ryan? He needs he needs minimum two years. Minimum two years. All right, can, can, I, can I ask you a question then? By the way, so boy, thank you. Of, needs you a couple more windows. Holes, you can pick holes in the tactics. You can pick holes. In, but actually going and saying, you know, I'm losing faith in Ange. I'm, you can't because if you do that, all all, all, all Mister Bold Aids is going to do is is sack another manager and we're going to start again. Okay. Let me ask you a question then. Let me ask you a question, right? By the way, Soul Boy, thank you for super chat. He says you have to try different tactics to see what works, but he's told us he's not going to Soul Boy. Um, he has made that clear. The only thing I ask you a question. The only thing I'm pissed off about Andrew about on Saturday was the substitutions. The substitutions should have been made at half time earlier when we were still in the game. There was no point making those substitutions after 67 minutes when we're 3-0 down. Those substitutions should have been made at half time. Basunum mm -hmm. should have been taken off and Bentacle should have been put on. And he should have taken off Kulusevsky. And I actually would have brought on Richarlison and played Son and Richie as a two up front. Richie could oh. have held the ball up and Son and you could have had Son and Brennan playing off him. That's the way I would have gone. That's the only... I the starting eleven was right. You can't complain about the starting eleven. Everyone picked that starting eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worked four nil, one four nil at Villa. Okay, you can't expect. We all said, don't change it, don't change it. You know, it's. No, it's, I agree. I agree. Don't 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 win it. Team. All right, let me ask you guys a question then. Let me ask you guys a question. By the way, I'm I'm just putting things out there to create the discussion. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean yeah, that's exactly happened. what I think. Yeah, but let me ask you this then. So. If we're going to give Ange time, which I agree, I think we should give him three, four years, but back him every summer, like a proper backing. Okay. I, I do think that. I agree with you. I don't think, I think hiring the manager takes us 10 step backwards. It, 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 I, we're done with that. But here's my question Has he not, has he not made a rod for himself on his back where he's come out and said, I have the say on transfers? He, he's the only manager that we've ever had that's publicly said that. So when you say that and you look at Van der Ven, you think, yeah, that's good. Vicario, yeah, that's good. Madison, when he's fit, up to speed, yeah, that's good. But then you see Brennan Johnson, inconsistent, missing open goals. Timo Werner, inconsistent, missing open goals. Veliz, in, doesn't get a chance, out. He's now been dropped by Seville. They don't rate him. And then you've got Solomon, okay, we don't know. Is it not a case of, hold on a minute, are all your signings actually for this system? Because this front line that you've got, and he signed four players for the front line, none of this really looks good. So how then do you go into each window with faith that he actually gets it and that or or we don't know? I'm just I'm just putting it out there. If Timo Werner was, let's call it a club signing because they were only prepared to spend a little bit of money and that's the best they could get for a little bit of money. So he said, all right, yeah, I'll take that because it's better than nothing because I've got nothing out there other than Brian Gill. So he's kind of been forced into it. Where's the confidence that, yeah, give this time, things will change, Ryan? Because I'm looking it's, at some of these signings and I don't get it. I don't get yeah, some of these signings. The signings thing, a lot of them stink of um, Antonio Conte saying, well, I gave the green light for the club to sign. Similar to the Jed Spence situation, but it's just reworded differently. No, that's but Ange said it. But yeah, goes, I, know, I, know, I, I have the They also said it with Jed Spence. You know, I gave the green light. Although he said, no, but he said it's a club signing. He also said yeah. that's a club signing. They wanted him. He did say, but, that. but he gave the green light. If he said no, he wouldn't have come. If he said no, yeah, okay. he, he gave the green light on the basis of I'm saying it to please the club. They yeah. want him. I've said, all right, do what you want. Yeah, right. That's what he said. Whereas Andrew, so, I am in the same with um, with Timo Werner. Personally, I, I can tell you right now. I personally, my gut instinct, we we're not going to sign Timo Werner permanently. We are not signing Timo ooh, Werner. Ooh, ooh. I, I don't know. I, I'm putting my neck out on the line, live in front of however many I, people. We are not signing Timo Werner on a permanent deal. I disagree sure. with you. I think we will. No, 
for, for one simple reason, he's 29 years old. That's if he's 10 million, if he's, he's 10 million, he's cheap. Oh, no, he's the 29 year old. Don't forget, that don't forget, suit, solid, that, doesn't so, club, that doesn't suit Levy because there's no sell on value, and it doesn't suit Ange because he can't develop him. Don't so forget, the Sol Solomon today to announce that he's not going to be back this season. So he's, he's uh, cheap, and, uh, and he will be. He's already worked under Ange now. And he's had the, six months in the Premier League. The thing is, if we signed him as a score player, if you're, it's one thing. If you sign him as 27, the first team, he's not 29. Mm -hmm. he's 27. As a first team player on a, to play on the left wing, and he's the first option because he's the cheapest option, I think that's just a terrible outlook in anything. You're buying someone to play in the first team because he's the, be he's the, he's the cheapest option rather than the best option. It's mm -hmm. just almost as if to say, well, Son's you know, is getting to that point now. Um, what do we do? Uh, we need to buy another Asian player because we need to, like, take care of that market, market. Uh, uh, no, we in, don't. in Asia. No, no, no. What I'm saying to you is is that we, if, if, if for me, we should buy the next big, best thing out coming to South Korea if he's the best player, you know, for the club rather than mm, for not, all the other stuff, commercial stuff. But you know that we're going to bring bring one in to, to for that reason, rather than because I want players to be at this club because they are the best there is around it. They are the best option for that position that we're requiring. I just want not, this victim not, 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 not because of this reason. It doesn't matter to me if they're black, white, yellow, blue, whatever. For me, is he has to be the best option for our team. Not because of the commercials, not because of this, not because of that. Because it's the best or because it's the cheapest option. It can't be for any of those reasons. He has to be the right player for the right reason. And, and for me, um, I know a lot of people's quite going back to what Ange Postacoglu. A lot of the, we don't have, we're not quite there yet. Player wise, I think the, the wide areas in particular, we're not quite there um, um, for for the for the way that we want to play. We're playing a high line, but if by playing a high line, I think one of the boys mentioned it earlier. Forgive me, I couldn't remember who said this. Where where it gets really compressed, I think it was Lee. Where it gets really compressed in that because we play that high line, you need real, real technical players that play in tight spaces and can deal with playing in low block teams because they'll play it around them. The way Man City do, they break teams down, but they have a high level of technical players within their team that can play into the in the tight spaces. We are, are building our game. We're probably one of the, you know, we're trying to build it. Um, I think Man City is, is, is our mould. I think, Postacog really likes that way of playing and we need to be get better technical players in very key areas. And I think the wide areas in particular are, are, are the, and a striker. I think the striker is, is a massive, massive. What about number six? Out. Have we got a proper number six? <laughs> well, what, do, do, we have, do we have a Rodri in the team? You're saying to me, no, we don't have a Rodri in the no, team. I'm, I'm no. questioning. Bissouma. Like, is Basuma genuinely good enough? Because he had 10 good games at the he's, start. He's, what, we've got what, hype, Bissouma, but since then, he's not been good. What so, Bissouma is showing us is inconsistencies. That's not good enough. It's, in, it's inconsistent. Rubbish. That's a big old inconsistency, Guy. Like, like, he, like he, was, he, was, he was poor under Conte for a very long well, time. Conte then got out, didn't he? Conte didn't yeah. play him. He called him out on it. And, so and he's only play. shown us 10 games this season. I agree, and he's only shown us ten games this season, plus a, a, a loads of um, red cards and God knows whatever out. I, 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 I'm not impressed at all. I'm we're questioning really everything. Impressed. We're questioning everything about him. We're questioning the way he plays. We're questioning the high line, the training sessions. Now we are seem to question absolutely everything. Well, let's let, let's let's get into some post match comments and see if we can break it down. Um, a user, thank you for the super chat. He Big says, up, "Are the training sessions too intense, or are?" Uh, players partying before games as players seem disengaged and exhausted. What the hell's going on with Basuma One and Kudu? Kudu? Kudu had a shocker, by the way. I will call him out. He stank against Fulham. I feel this mentality thing keeps creeping back in. That's the you. issue. Mentality. Because all the players had a stinker still. Everyone, we called in Udogi, who was, you know, who was brilliant over the week before. Uh, Poro, and then you have this, uh, the, the midfield with quality. Saar was quality against Villa. So was M Madison looked like he was back to his best and the goal should have given him a new lease of life. So, you know, Son made a, a difference, it, 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 you know, it, up front. 
And then you, you, you fast forward to one week and all those certainties that we had acquired from the week before went missing. So it's an absolutely mentality thing. The, if, if, if your goalkeeper is yet again, if your goalkeeper is yet again your best player and is the only one, by the way, who mentally, mentality-wise, doesn't seem to drop. If you notice, Vicario is consistently there mentally. Is always in the mo is always in the moment. We don't have enough of that. And I said it earlier on. Van der Ven sets the tone in every game. With the first crunching challenge he puts in, he sets the tone to everyone. Let me let me Without go. Him there, that, we lose isn't, certainties. Isn't, isn't that why all these questions have been asked, though, Wiggy? Because we don't have that. I mean, apparently, that mentality is not here anymore. We don't have your Davises. We don't have your Dyers. We don't have your um, half half of that lot that we've got rid of. It takes time. We don't have more than Davies. It takes time. We've literally got a new squad of players. This mentality has been within us for 25 years. But that this mentality, mentality but but this I understand, but this is new players coming in, right? They shouldn't have that. It, it, it's, it's, it's because of the way the What happens to mine. mayonnaise, when you a little bit of mayonnaise, when you stick it on a massive tub of, of, of ketchup? What happens to that mayonnaise? Does it still stay it. white? It you doesn't it. go bad after six days. Eat Just eat the mayonnaise, mate. Eat or, the mayonnaise. No, but you understand what I'm trying to no. say. Yeah, know, but you have to have a big. You have to make yeah, sure that the ketchup it, becomes it less and longer. the mayonnaise is a lot more. I guess my point is, it should take longer, or the, the mentality was shit when we first bought him in. It's the ethos of the club, JP. It's, it's not the, the it individual fucking starts players. from the top, man. I don't want to go the there. Ethos of the club because it's, it's, it puts it's, me in the mood, but it all stems yeah. from the top. You go to work if your boss is not setting the tone for everyone else in in the office. You're gonna do whatever you fucking want. It's Why that's all it comes down think? to, man. Why are we questioning well, are you, the players then? I'm not bashing them. I'm not bashing them. I, I criticize well, no. the performance <laughs> on the pitch. JP. But if if you're talking about the ethos of the club, it's 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 there to everyone to see. And like we keep going on. It's like you know, it's like, I might as well it. bang my head against this wall and that's like I'm not gonna get a different result until the geezer leaves. Look, and the new owners come in. It, it, it's it's what Brian Daigle says all the time. It's not Levy's fault why the players you know, play the way that when they step onto that pitch, the result and the performance has nothing to do with Daniel Lee. Of course. Absolutely nothing. The very reason they're allowed to perform like that and put in performances like that has everything to do with Daniel Levy because he allows it to happen. Ryan, Ryan, you got that wrong. That's not what he said. I mean, <laughs> you it's have similar. To it. what Brian Daigle said is, the manager picks the players that step onto the pitch and the manager picks the tactics and the formation. It's the chairman that gives the manager the players, though. So the manager's picking from what the chairman is allowing them to get. Yeah. But here's the problem now. But here's the problem. By the way, Wayne Holland, big up for your super sticker. Up, Thank you so much. Where, where the problem lies with this, though, is, is a few things. Number one, Ange is continue, continually defending the situation. So... No one told him to come out and say, we can't spend £100 million on a player. I don't think the club will ever do that. He didn't need to say that. He didn't need to say, I have the final say on transfers. Right? So he's he's saying things that says to me, either you are going to dig yourself a hole here or you are towing the corporate line. Either way, Either way it's a fuck up. It's almost like Ryan, we've seen this before. He has to be accountable, right? He is making himself me. accountable. He has said it's on me. So what do we do now as fans? Where every year I've defended Conte, I've defended Mourinho, I've defended Poch. No, Bosch, I've no defended we don't blame Bernard. Levy. We have to blame him. But I'm now glad he's coming no, on me. my side. But now he's glad said you're me. coming on my side. In terms, in, in terms of saying what he said, what do we do now? <laughs> he, he, he said it in a he said it in a dignified manner, in the way that Conte didn't. So if you can read between the lines, he's also saying back me, back me with the players that I, I need. All right, he I, hasn't said anything I, like that, Ryan. I don't know, Ryan. I said this on Saturday. Listen, we're yeah, Angie, but... For him taking ownership of the buck stops here in regards to transfers doesn't look good. Uh, the others were smart enough to say, hey, you know, and then, you know, finally yeah, contact. Watch with I'm coach, talk to someone else yet. Yeah. But, it's, it's, uh, it's, 
it's a shit show. Again, it's one of them that we say it every year as Spurs fans, but we'll see in the summer. It is a and massive... that's the fear, isn't it? Because it is, it's it's actually, enough we had already. conversation the other day, Ryan, and I said to Stel, Stel was way till the summer, way till the summer. I was like, in your gut, you know what's going to happen in the summer, don't you? And, and to be fair, I said this Saturday, you know, because, you know, a day later, a day and a half later, just listen to everybody, you know, especially those who like to criticize our channel and and I say, I say as this, and I'll say it again. I know it's year one. And so far, we've done better than what I expected for year one. Sure. The only negative is the talent level, right? Especially looking at what happened in January. Are we committed in the summer? It, it really, we're going to find out our answer this summer. Are we committed? to getting the talent, the necessary talent, to compete from what, his, what he said in his press conference to be able to cross that line. And that's the million dollar question. And so far, you know, the Brennan Johnsons, the Man of Solomons, and Timo Werner smells like things of the past. It looks like things of the past, smells like things of the past. And so for me, I'm struggling to find a change other than the Locker room is happy. You know, we're playing a bit offensive, but the defense is looking to be worse than the Conte's last year. So it's kind of like, like I told Adrian the other day, are you really entertained? I was entertained during the Harry Redknapp days. I was entertained during the early Poch days. I'm not, I'm not entertained like that. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not entertained like that. Those I mentioned good. it earlier, Mari. I mentioned it earlier. We're not, we're not playing. I don't think we're playing good football. Yeah, I already know. I'm not, I'm not entertained. Like, no, people, I mean, the football right now isn't amazing. And people, I, I, I saw a tweet that said that we're playing unbelievable football. And I'm saying, what it's are ridiculous. you watching? Really yeah. football, the, the football isn't amazing yet. The, the, yet. Uh, yeah. yet. It doesn't help, so, though, Brian, when you get the likes of... Red Nap and stuff like that, and Sky Sports saying, you know, he he's he's excited every time he watches Spurs play, and couldn't and couldn't understand who turned up on Saturday. He was half expecting an excuse come out like they had some dodgy lasagna or was flu going around the team or something like that. It's, but it's, the, but the, but this is the problem, right? They're, they're, we're getting people like that where that fans latch onto that are then like. You know, oh, we're playing great football. I mean, to be fair, first 10 games of the season, everyone's latching on that. Oh, we did really great. No, we weren't playing well. We were getting results, but I don't think necessarily we were playing well at all. Arsenal was <coughs> the, the only prob- good game. Arsenal was the Burnley, only good game, yeah. Burnley away. And, and, Burnley, yeah, yeah, and, Burnley and listen, away, yeah. the, I, I will, yeah. I, I've coming back onto what Mari said a second ago about these transfers and stuff, right? I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the first summer and and I'm always of the opinion that January is the hardest time to get players in anyway, I think you'll probably find that most of those transfers were already in the works before Ange even got here. So I agree that him saying, you know, this every transfer I give the green light, blah, blah, blah. I, I think you have to take that with a pinch of salt with those type of transfers when you know that the likes of Brennan Johnson, we've been after him before Ange was even in the, in the picture about being our manager. So <clears throat> I think we'll give him a little bit of leeway on those ones. And uh, th- th- so for me, <clears throat> summer is, is exactly where it's got to be right now. I give the say on these, these transfers because if I'm saying that I'm going to be absolutely stubborn, and, and this is the problem, we're, we're not, we're not, there's been so many comments tonight about you're toxic and all this kind of, can't believe Ange, give him, he's had eight, he's only had eight months. No, we understand that. And we're not being critical of Ange as a manager and wanting him out. We're just being critical of some of the decisions that he makes when we go to play Fulham on a, a, a Saturday night and we get absolutely steamrolled. We shouldn't be expecting to get steamrolled by Fulham. And that's what's happened. So you've got, a, you, you are allowed to be critical of decisions that make, <clears throat> that managers makes within a within a particular match. That's we're allowed to do that. We're not experts, but we're allowed to do that. We can watch a match and we can see what's happening with our eyes. Um, but this summer could, he's got to really, he's got no. sorry about just I'll finish this That's sentence good, no, and I'll go. go. This good. summer, if he doesn't because he's so stubborn with his system, he's got to get 
the players that he wants. Otherwise, this is never, ever going to work. If he's yep. stubborn in his approach and he's stubborn in the fact that, no, I want to play my way of playing, and you can see that we are so many players short of that with the technical ability to do it, because I'm sure his system works when you've got the right players. If he doesn't and 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 then comes out and says, uh, we get players in and we can see that they don't work, and he says, yes, I, I've greenlit all of these, then you're going to have to start questioning because you like, if you need specific players for a system, then you need specific players. You don't let the club just buy you whatever. That that's going to be the tell, exactly on on whether he's a, a yes man or whether he's actually in control. And if he doesn't get the players he wants, I hope he burns it down like Conte did. And also, this hundred million pound thing is just a joke. That you've got to understand what type of bloke he is. He's he's a kind of bloke that doesn't. He he says things in chess. This whole top four thing that he was talking about the other day, right? Why you are questioning me about top four? My target isn't top four. My target is to win as many games as possible. Where we end up, that is an outcome of just trying to win games. I've not got a target of top four, and, and stop asking me about it. I've told you before that's not what I'm I'm, I'm targeting. I don't believe so stop, him. And he, uh, I think he's got that. Fru- I don't know. I think that's where he's got that frustration from. And this whole hundred million pound player thing. I'm sorry, but he's absolutely right. First off, hundred million pound players. We'd be lucky if we get them to get them to come to Tottenham anyway, because we're talking. I know we we there's some of some players have slipped into that bracket this in the last summer, but <clears throat> we don't need it. We don't need to spend a hundred million pound on a player. I'd rather spend one hundred twenty million, uh, one hundred twenty million pound on two sixty million pound players that are going to do a good uh, that, that are good players that work in his system there's no point play, spending 100 million pound for a player that's not going to work in the system you could get the greatest player in the world but if he doesn't work in the system it's just going to be dead weight so yeah, but lee, I, I about, get why he says that but lee what about if you spend 100 million pound player on a player that does work in the system well i'd have to question whether that player is is of such a standard that they'd even come here in the first place i've always been of that opinion right and who's the and who's the whose fault lies in that uh, that's the reputation of the club. Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, that can, and that comes from the top. Yeah, and and it, the, look, I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate here, but I I, I think we, we and even us here we're saying confusing messages. And the reason why I think we're saying confusing messages, on one hand, we're saying, oh, we've got to see what happens this summer. But he's already played two hands. He's played his hand in summer, and he's played his hand in 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 january and it's also been saying a lot of things that are really concerning and 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 here's one of the reasons why i say that if you're gonna bite every time he's questioned on top four and so i'm aiming higher than that then why don't you apply that same logic to your signings yeah right why why don't he hasn't done that yet mess don't play devil's advocate when he hasn't done that yet. Next summer is going to be the, the time when that will be questioned. Which, well, he has done that. He bought Madison <sighs> for forty million and and Johnson for fifty million. I, I, as again, already... as I say, I don't I don't believe that the, the club weren't already in for them before Ange got walked through the door. Well, then, but th- so then, okay, okay. I, 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 I take I take what you said there. But then he's lying to us, isn't he? Because he's saying he's in complete control and he wanted to play. Said, yeah, no, you're right, Matt. Because he said he it was him crazy that he he was the one who convinced Madsen. Everybody said it was right. him looking into Madsen's eyes, right? Right. So, and this is and this is what I'm saying. Like, like we're being, uh, and this is not, I'm not our, questioning but Madison, we're, but, yeah. but we're being it's contradictory, it's right? It's if you're gonna. He needs to be consistent with his standards, right? And I th- I personally think Conte was consistent with his standards, which is why everything went bad very quickly with him. He was unhappy from that first transfer window that he properly had. He was a change manager. We finished fourth. He came back that season, right, the, the, the following season, and things were just different. He was not happy, right, after that, especially that... Um, the career trip when they're all puking up on the side of the pitch or whatever, whatever was happening. Right. And I, I think Ange is, he's trying to keep things together and he's trying, and I think he's doing, he's trying to do the best as he can to knead everything together and keep everyone focused in the direction, in the right direction. And that's, that's where I, I really agree with you, Lee, but all the messaging and the actions are, are, are really big warning signals that things have not changed. 
And and this is all leading to exactly the same thing as what happened with Conte. When Conte got us fourth, we were all saying exactly the same thing we're saying now. There's virtually no difference to what we were saying back then as what we're saying now. Well, Maz, Maz, let me let me get into the post-match comments because I want to bring up Conte's comments as well. Um, very quickly, big up Wayne Holland for the super chat. Uh, Matt Coppin, super chat. He says, follow the yellow brick road, i.e. all roads lead back to Daniel. Uh, a user, he says, Ash said he will not change his tactics and we don't have the players. Fair enough. But this allows other teams to learn our tactics and counter us. I think a lot of teams have actually sussed us out a user, if I'm honest with you. Um, I want to get into some post-match comments from the loss to Fulham. Just a reminder to people before we do this, this is what Conte said when he <clears throat> when he left Tottenham. They're used to it here. They don't play for something important. They don't want to play under pressure. They don't want to play under stress. Tottenham's story is this. 20 years, there is the owner and they have never won anything. Why? So he's, he's trying to say the club as a whole doesn't like pressure situation, doesn't like playing under stress, i.e. you've got to handle pressure and win in stressful games if you want to go on to be successful. He's saying they're not used to it here. They don't like it. Now, after the match, Kim Min Sun, he said, a result like this is painful. As the captain of this club, I want to apologise to the fans because they didn't deserve that performance. How many times have we heard these apologies? Too many. Uh, is, it, is anyone uh, like moved by that? Are you moved by it? You're like, oh, first, okay, yeah, cool. The, yeah, yeah. The first thing that went through my mind was already heard it, not interested. He should have gone around and done something on the pitch, be it shouted at players, dragged up, dragged them around. That's the thing with somebody, he's not that kind of player. He's not that kind of captain. But I don't really want to hear, I'm sorry, and the player should look in the, should have a look in the mirror. I don't know how many mirrors they've been through. This is why Son, in my opinion, isn't a good captain. When the times are good and he's scoring goals and he's happy and we're winning games, he's a great captain. You know, if he keeps everyone on side, he's great. When the going gets tough and we're falling down, he's too nice. He, he, he's not ruthless enough. He's not a Roy. We don't have anyone player. in the team like yeah. that, do we, Ryan, really? Well, there's Romero, Porro, Vicario. I've seen Bentoncourt. I, I, I'd even chuck, say, someone like Hoybier in there who, who would actually grab grab someone and actually go, wake the fuck up. He was selling so, Porro off, wasn't he? So there, there are players that are more, that, that you would want to captain in the situation that was happening at Fulham. When, when the going gets tough, when you're in a dark place, you're not doing well, that's when you find your real leaders. It's easy captaining sides when you're winning 3-4-0 at Aston Villa, let's be real. Um, very quickly, Peter, you've made loads and loads of these comments in the chat tonight saying that we are turning on Ange, we crucified him. Stop lying. We are Ange in. We are critically analysing the game and what fans are saying. A lot of fans are criticising and questioning a lot of what he says, and we're just debating the criticisms, all right? So you don't need to keep coming in with that energy in the chat. Um, the Postacoglu, he said, once they scored their second goal, we seem to lose our way, which is disappointing because we haven't done that before this year. That's a lie. Did we not do that against Brighton? And, and Wolves? Slightly different, Brighton. Why? That was 4-0. They went 2-0 down, they did nothing. We could see another two. They no, us. It, in terms of the Brighton the Brighton game, I was there for the Brighton game. Um, yeah, they batted us completely off the pitch. But in terms of the spirit was still there. Um, the, I mean, the Brighton goals came from, I mean, the sec, from the second to fourth, it was two penalties in an absolute worldy. If we're going to be straightforward, this game, there was no fight and endeavour to actually, even at 2-0, at least... You could see the fight was still there at Brighton because we came back four two. We could have ended up nicking a third. But, but if we scored, if we scored, if we scored the open goals, Ryan, uh, listen, I'll, I'll bring it up here. Look, Ange Postecoglou made a triple change, and Spurs should have pulled a goal, but for two glaring misses. First, Johnson missed a cross from Sun in front of goal, although he probably would have been offside. Then a minute later, substitute Timo Werner failed to divert Johnson's right wing cross at the far post with the goal gaping. So. That would have made it three two. Yeah, difference is we didn't take those chances, did we? Yeah, but Angie's comment wasn't about taking chances. He says we lost our way. 
but we still created chances, so we didn't lose our way, did we? We I did. Don't know. Maybe because he's saying things. The that... went in. Five, when the second goal went in, five minutes later, the third went in. Two minutes later, they should have had a fourth, but it was disallowed. That, as you said at the start of the show, it could have been six or seven before we even. Yeah, had yeah, yeah, I did. I did say that. Okay, that, I think that's what he means by losing our way. We, we we didn't lose our way in terms of the way we were trying to play. We lost our way in terms of the mentality and actually sticking together as a team. Did we not lose our way against Chelsea? Again, isolated instant. We're down to nine men. Does um, anyone? Does, does, does everyone agree with this, guys? Do you think that's a fair comment? This is the only game we've lost our way. We haven't done that before this season. Is that a fair thing to say? As I say, I think I'm, I think I'm there's sure been enough. Heard, I'm sure I heard a few times them come out and say, "I'm really sorry," and it we need to look at ourselves in the mirror. So that's. I just feel that. Do you know what it is, Estelle? That every time I read these comments, yeah, they feel like circumstantial comments rather than a genuinely heartfelt comments in the moment. You know, I make this, I, I say something here about this defeat, about this game, and I ain't going to go the next game or the one after that, say exactly the same circumstantial comments then again. If I mean, if I ain't feeling it, I ain't going to say it. So it just feels like, it, it's like, you know, sometimes like the, the excuse is already written and ready to say in case it goes that, it goes, you know, it goes south. I feel like these, these are what these comments are. And I just... I just find it really That's hard to relate to them. The yeah, because machine, the same old, same mm -hmm. old. And I just feel like I can't relate to them anymore because they just don't feel like they're in the moment comments. And You're uh, the captain. You need to go out there and make a video and say you're sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just like, you know, and then like, you know, you know what these players are like when they're talking. It's like, you know, the post-match comments now, even with the players, they get interviewed after the game. Yeah. There's very, very few that actually speak out of that, out of the context, they tell you what they generally feel in that moment. Everyone else is just the same written script that they say, you know, and it's like, I get bored with listening to them half of the time, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's that's my take on it, man. Juan, do you know what? Uh, big up, Anthony. Uh, he says, what is Sun supposed to do? Say everyone suck today? This team is an effing joke, full of weak-minded soft players who'd always let you down. What can I say? It's the yes. history of time. What, no, what, not, what, what? Not, not, try, not necessarily throw them under the bus, but just say like... What I will say is Sun chooses to stay at top. Kane left. Kane walked. He's like, I'm done with this. Right? So Sun, Sun has chosen to be a part of this. So he, he needs to take some ownership as well, Sun, then. Right? He needs to take ownership. You're the captain. You're, you know, he, he's the best player we got. Let's be honest. You know, maybe him and Van de Ven. Them two, but uh, is it isn't is even is is it he's our world class player? Let's not get that. But, wrong, right? but JP, isn't he? Is he sick of saying this? Like, isn't Sun fed up of saying this? Like, surely he, he, he how long has he been here? How long has Sun been here? Eight years, it's seven a, years. It's the same thing we said with Kane. It? It's just the same <laughs> thing. Yeah, just, but, didn't it? Listen, at the end of the day, they all have to take responsibility. I mean, let's do, we're talking about. You know, we lost our way. There's been plenty of situations in in, in games in the in the um, in this season so far where we've got we've we've we found our way, but we've had to go behind to find it. Right? We've had to wake up. This Fulham game and the reason why so many people are peed off about it is because we just didn't turn up. We didn't lose our way. We just didn't turn up from from moment one. From, that from that's the that's minute. the serious issue about it. It's just it was just a whole stinking horrible 5 30 on a saturday night and it sounds like people just didn't it, i don't know the it was the mentality just was not right when that whistle was blown and and we just didn't <clears throat> maybe we underestimated them i don't know maybe they were like well we beat villa 4-0 this is going to be easy and 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 they just went nah you're not having that see you later and we just couldn't get ourselves out of a lull because i mean it's all right if we if we if we at least you know, tried our hardest and, and full and beat us. Fair enough. But for me, it just didn't turn up at all. And Posikoglu, the day after, he said this. It's understood. Well, he didn't say this is Alistair Gold reporting. Let me take that back. Alistair Gold reported. It's understood that Ange is trying to change and get out of the mentality of aiming just for top four with everyone around the club. 
right? I, I want everyone to listen carefully who's watching this show with everyone around the club. <laughs> He's trying to build something for next season to challenge at the top. I told you guys last week, my guys inside Spurs, next season, they want to go for the title, right? This is confirming what I told you last week. Now, I think it's delusional, but okay, right? He wants to change the mentality of just aiming for top four. So I posted this online. So you're admitting all these years, Spurs want, all Spurs wanted was top four and not trophies. So we were right all along, but yet we're called negative and toxic for saying this by your mob. They lost the plot when I told them that. Because if if, 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 Ali, if Alistair Gold is the ITK of Tottenham and he's saying Andrew's trying to change the mentality of top four with everyone at the club, then that means this was the mentality, just top four. Is this not what we've been saying, guys, for years? Yep, yes. Is, like, I, I, feel, I feel vindicated, <laughs> personally. Well, that's exactly what it's saying. Without without moaning, it's exactly what it's saying, right? It's like the the target was never to be a club at the yeah. top of the league. It was always just to get, it's just to get what whatever we could get out of a season. The thing is, I don't believe him when changes. he says I, I I don't believe him when he says um, that the target isn't top four again this season. The, we know that the board and Daniel Levy set that his. target for. it. For every it's single his, manager, yeah, it might not be his. Yeah, you're right. I get you're what you're right. saying about the board. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. not his. I don't. Well, I tell you the truth. I don't even think top four was the goal this season until we had that very good start in the first ten games. I, I personally think um, that the goal was genuinely for, for Levy just to get the fans off his back. That was the goal, and he'd done it after ten games, and then he went top four, please. But we were all saying that, Ryan, though, weren't we, at the beginning of the season? Yeah. We were saying that there is, it's almost like, let's not, there's no expectation this season. Just do what you can do, do what you do with the players you got. We'll get and a foundation and then we'll, 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 we'll try that for that something way. next year. But we've, but the problem is, we've, as soon as we, as soon as we get into a position where it's like, oh, actually, you know, we're doing really well here, everything gets overhyped. And it's just like, well, actually, no. A, foot, a loss against Fulham brings you back down to earth. That's that's the way it is. One week you have a good game against Villa, the next week you're getting beaten by Fulham. That's the reality of it. But we're so we've now got into a mentality where it's like, well, no, actually we're we're fourth spot or we're two points off fourth. We should be there. We should be beating these guys. Fortunately, it's the reality. I still think with the group of players we've got, we are a a seventh or eighth place team that is doing really really well at some stage, and then we're having drops and. Uh, that in, in 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 certain games, it's just it is the way it is. Come with time, more, better players. Given given the just given the uh, just given these situations of this season, everything that's gone by, the fact that we have had Van der Ven out for three months, Madison out for three months, Saar and Basuma and Son away on the Asian games, we've not had a settled but, side. But, 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 but Ryan, Ryan, right. Other than Van der Ven, we had our best team out on that pitch and we got absolutely torn to pieces. That was our best, best 10. Yeah. Okay. And it happens. It yeah, happens. But, all, but, it, but it always happens under every manager every year. This moment, this kind of game happens. And I, I guarantee you, this will happen again in the next 10 weeks. It, it probably will, but I, I remember Pep Guardiola in his first season going to Goodison Park and getting absolutely shat on 4 0. I Pep, mean, Pep Guardiola won Champions League, La Liga's, this, that, and everything else before he came to Man City, though. Like, this, yeah. this guy was the okay. dog. Yeah. He, and he won, went, he, he won, and, he, and he, he went to Goodison won. Park and got, and got his ass handed to him 4 0. It's happened uh, for four years. Right. <laughs> Klopp, Klopp, <laughs> went, Klopp went to Stoke. And got his ass handed to him 6-1 on the final day of the season. Klopp won the Bundesliga against the dominant Bayern Munich. He won yes. the, the German Cup. This, the, yes. These guys but came still went to Stoke and got his ass handed to him 6-1. He also got to happen. cup finals. He got to cup finals in his first two seasons, though. We went yes. out of all the domestic cups in round yes. one. Yes, but like, regardless... I'm not, I'm not blaming Ange, by the way. I'm not blaming Ange. I'm not blaming Ange. All I'm I saying is... This happens to us every every season. I get that, I get, but the reason why it happens to Pep, it happens to Pep in season one. This happens to Tottenham every season because like, because because a manager doesn't get the time to have more than one season. Yeah, but and and I would also say it it may happen to other managers, i.e., the Klops, your Peps, and <laughs> any other manager. But it happens to them for different reasons. Then it's it's a completely different reason it happens to them than it does us. 
Mm. Our reason's unique and it's called Livy. Yeah. I, I want to show you, um, uh, what do you think of this, right? So I went on We Are Tottenham TV. Um, I, I said what I wanted to say. I said, look, if we sign Timo Werner, I'll say on this channel, if we sign Termo Wiener, Termo, Turbo Wiener, Termo Wiener. Right, if, if the Wiener signs a long-term contract at this club this summer, I am Ange out. I'm saying it. I've said on every platform I've been on because that is an acceptance of mediocrity and failure. I'm done. I, I can't. I'm not going through this again, right? If we don't sign him, amazing. Ange gets it. He's totally got it, right? That's how I see it. There's no. This is very black or white with me. One, right, I've got nothing but a bombardment of hate in the comments. Oh, my God, they unleashed. The Spurs faithful unleashed on me. I don't care. You don't want to hear it. It doesn't bother me. But this one guy, he wrote something, and I thought to myself, do you know what? Big up. He said, a contrarian fan bringing in some sense and a reality check to all those delusional fans who dream about winning the league and these players, sorry, with these players, as Ange allowed you to believe. How many times have we been hyped about a new manager, yet we turn on him the first chance something goes south, which is kind of what we've been talking about tonight. Like Poch in 2019, like Mourinho, and like we did with Conte. Ange has, sorry, this guy has backed all three managers, as in he's talking about me now. So Stelios has, been, Stelios has backed all three managers when people said they needed them out. But for some reason, Ange is different. Probably because Ange is a mouthpiece for Levy. Sorry to disappoint, but this is what Ange is turning into because he knows this job is a step up, meaning he has to appease the higher ups because this is the first stint in a real league. Now, is there some truth in that, guys? Do you think Ange is becoming a bit of a yes man to appease Levy? Because this is the first big gig he's got. Because no, I know right, Mass thinks he kind of is a bit. We won't know this till the summer. We really won't know because as we said, um, it, it, in the um, he, he came out and said we needed a centre back for the winter window. He went and got Dragosin. I genuinely think Timo Werner was just an opportunist loan signing, and as well, just added depth while Son was away. Um, summer window, we know that we were we've always been after Brennan Johnson. We've always been after James Madison. Um, he wanted the the quick centre back, um, which he got with Mickey Van der Ben. Um, the goalkeeper situation that got sorted out early enough that he he said he wanted. Um, so he, he's pretty much had what he's wanted so far. Um, we won't know whether he's an, an actual puppet or Levy mouthpiece until until the summer window. Because if he second it, season, I agree. Yeah, it, I it, disagree. It, it, if you know, I, but I completely summer, disagree. Summer, we we do sign Timo Werner permanently. We make. We make Ryan. Why does Maz? Maz, why do you disagree? Well, I'll tell you why. Because before Ange even came, or we were even talking about him, we knew we wanted the goalkeeper, right? So we needed a new uh, number one, right? We knew we needed a centre back because we had uh, Clement Long Gap and and, or two centre backs, Clement Long Gap and uh, Eric Dyer and Davies, right? They knew that Kane was leaving, right? And Madison was effectively an appeasement signing because Kane was leaving. They knew that if they didn't bring in a quality player of some kind, right, that the whole fan base would rip up the stadium if we didn't do that. And they did that, right? And that only leaves Solomon, which is a typical Levy signing free, right? And Johnson, which is an Ange signing, which is, let's be honest, is not turned out the way we thought it was going to turn out or if he's statistically he's probably done okay but he looks rubbish so i I don't i don't like i said before i don't see this correlation that we're seeing with him listen i just can't say i can't have a manager say that i'm trying to change the mentality of a club all over and then accept a signing like timo verner Listen, unless we get... <clears throat> That's why I'm going to be Ange out if we sign him. Well, exactly. Right? But listen, I'm, listen, I'm, listen. I'm if, 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 let's, let's, be, let, let's be very concise about what we're saying, though. If, uh, if Timo Werner signs for Tottenham and that's it in that position, then yes. If, if theoretically or maybe we sign 
Eze or someone of that nature, but Timo is just brought in as a squad player because the likes of Solomon, maybe he's just not going to be back, he's too injured or something of that nature, then I can let that slip to an extent because it won't be big wages, won't be big signing on fee. But I would still expect that someone else would also come in, maybe not of as high level, that would play an understudy to whoever we bring in. That is a that is a a player that is ready, ready now for that position. I'll because you he what, can't I'm be. I'm one of those I disagree with that, Lee, because I'll be happy with Eze, but if we keep Werner as a stopgap, and what happens is if Eze doesn't play well, and we bring Werner on with 15, 20 minutes to go, and he does what he did against Fulham, pointless. Yeah, no, and that's why I'm saying he's got, we've got to, he's got to, we've got to want more than just that one in that, that position. I'm I'm just, I'm just, after after Redknapp, right, and then you know we had you know Sherwood and then and then AVB and back for Luton and, right. and then we Ryan had, Mason. We have uh, Ryan Mason, you know, Parch after Parch. Stellini, Stellini then, was a and then, jo- and, then jo- jo- and then and then Nuno. People tend to forget, and then Conte. Why? My my thinking is, if he's trying to change the culture, uh, culture, why is it every manager has to change the culture? That's the that's the problem. <laughs> already. That's a great point. That's that's really a, oh that's a wow! That Wait, is a great point. <laughs> it's, 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 it's that's the problem already. I'm tweeting, because, I'm tweeting straight after the show. Straight after no, the tweet. No, <laughs> that's the problem. Can we already. end it here? Can we just end it? <laughs> no, that was that was <laughs> mic drop. Why? Why Look, does every manager try and have to? Why does every manager have to try? And yeah, what does that have to take to the point of a manager to change the culture? Because, oh, like, it, it, like it, 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 in, in, in the game of sport, right, the culture, the ambition starts from on top. It starts from ownership. It goes to the board, and then the magic comes in. Like, that's that's the frustrating thing about it. Why does it take Ange to change the culture? If Ange is trying to change the culture, that goes. that's the problem. Mari, Mari. As I said, Mari, Mari, because we've got one of those meddling Boards and directors of any Premier League or even any yeah. club in the first top three. You don't hear of any other directors, yeah. owners that, that medal as much as this. They are literally and, just dependent on the, the, the ink on the checks. Mari, and the Mari, not us, though. No, not us. Because yeah, it's Mari, the media the out there. That's why. This, the but, reason why they do this is because the board think that the manager is the, that person that will come in and do that, right? Which is rightly so, right? In every other club that works. But what they don't realise is they are the problem. <laughs> it's not the managers, it's them. So they just keep doing it. It, it just boggles my mind. You know, someone posted Man City owners wanted, mm. like the Man City owners, even before Pep, Mancini, um, the one before Mancini, uh, well, they had Green, right? They, I can imagine they walked in. And Man City's board and ownership says, we want to win at all costs. Even with 155 uh, 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 charges, we want to win at all costs. Those managers didn't have to come in and say, hey, I need to change this culture and have us winning. Right? They walked into that office and said, this is what we're about. Newcastle, yes, they stepped back. But at least Newcastle has openly said, we want to be a Premier League champions within the first 10 years. So when, whoever replaces Eddie Howe already knows he doesn't have to change the culture because the culture already accepts this is what we want to do. And I assume it's the same with Liverpool. It's the same with – it used to be the same with Chelsea. We don't know what's going on right now. And we and we assume that's right now the Cronkies are doing that. They're like, hey, Arteta or anybody else, we now have expectations. We are expected to win. That's the same thing Conte says. Conte says – uh, uh, Chelsea at the time of Roman, they had an expectation to win. Uh, Whereas Spurs, it's a hope; it's not an expectation. He, he uh, Conte said that, and and that's why I'm just mm. like, that's nice. Ange wants to change the culture, but he shouldn't have to change the culture. It should already be set up to set up. We want mm. to win at all costs. To do today is to do. That is our motto. 
what 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 was our model? Good night, everyone. And that we wraps up the show. <laughs> We're, We're done. done. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, thank but you, you. Do, do you know, do, do you know what? Do, do you know what it is? The problem with... No, with no, no, right. Right. <laughs> the reason, listen, it all comes down to one thing. No one, nobody at Spurs will ever make those statements that we want to win the Premier League in 10 years. We want to do this and because it involves yeah, yeah. taking accountability. And nobody yeah. at this club, no board, no owners wants to take accountability. And, and which is why we create all these smoke screens in front of those people that should be taking those kind of Billy, because if one when because if all goes to shit, which often happens at Spurs, they the ones that take 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 the fall, and and the person that's responsible way back there with all the smoke screens, <laughs> he's getting away with it all. So I guess I guess the thing no, is why why come out and say it when you know you're not going to spend the money. Yeah, that's well, we don't know yet. <laughs> we don't You're know right, JB. I don't know what to say to that one. But uh, the, the bottom line is, these guys, don't forget, at the end of the day, yeah, Ange uh, or anyone oh, else that comes to the just, club, it's anyone just else that again. comes to the club, Lee, anyone else that comes to this club, they are employees, man. They're getting paid. They're going to tell you shit. Sometimes they have to throw shit at you to make you believe but they have. But we're not stupid. We know that it's not Ange, it's not Conte, it's not Mourinho. It's not. These guys are coming in to do a job, and at the end of the day, if they get sacked, they get paid regardless. So they don't have any emotional affiliation to Tottenham yeah. in that sense. So yeah, back mate, to you, Stelios. I'm done. Mate, <laughs> we've read, we've read, we've we're so bit. stupid. <laughs> but guys, we're all so stupid. We've all read this so wrong. It's beyond belief. If you reread it. It yes. must be an accent thing or something like that. He didn't say he wants to change the culture of the club. He said he wants to bring in culture club. It's a backup to Beyonce. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, oh, damn damn it. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel oh, Levy. Oh. Daniel Levy. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, That's the song about the managers. That's the song about I'm the managers. Back to you, Steph. I've got to say, like, if. if if Mari, Mari, that's Mari, a song about the managers, Mari. They come and go. They come and go. They come and go. Culture club. We can have fun and culture club. smile and joke on a Monday night. It's not all too serious. You know what? We have to. We have to have a, le a level of. It, 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 if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. If you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. Exactly that. It's like this is where we're at, man. This is this is all this is all desperation tactics, right? Here. It's like we end up laughing because it's like I do have one serious question, though. genuine question. Before, no, before you do that, before you do that, very quickly, super chat from a user. He says, unless our fan base does not unite, enjoy the ride. Agreed. But listen. Mari, I will come to you, right? Mari, you had the speech of the night, but the comment of the night has got to go to Tony Rodriguez. <laughs> 24 years of full play. <laughs> I told. Oh, take a bow, son. Take a bow. Imagine. No, action, just full play. Yeah, go for it. Right, go for it. Right. Okay. It was this time last year, obviously, the, the Conte ramp, blah, 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 and, and everything went downhill. But we faced Bournemouth. We lost to Bournemouth, and then at that point, everything just crumbled. If we lose to Luton, do you see a similar situation happening? Yes. Like in terms, oh, we of the lose to Luton. The toxicity oh. inside the stadium, uh, the fights inside the stadium. Do you actually see it properly kicking off like last year? Ryan, I said in the WhatsApp group for Tottenham away, you're not, you're not in it to see. I said <laughs> if we play in April like we did against Fulham. Right, if we play like that in April, social media is going to turn into a crime scene. We have to beat Luton and we have to play them off the park. I think we will beat them. I think we will beat Luton. We said that about Bournemouth last year. Is it, uh, yeah, but I think Luton are down and out. Yeah, okay. They said they're, that about they, Bournemouth last year. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, down I, I, Bournemouth I think were down and out last Look, year. You're right. You're right. Look, never say never, but I I think we will beat Luton Town. I really oh, do. Yeah. At, at home, a, a team in the lower level that we beat Sheffield United, we beat Burnley in the cup. The lower levels, I think, will be if we don't beat Luton. <laughs> it's it's, it's just going to go off. 
it's going to go off. I, I think I think even if we draw, it could get a little bit toxic. Even if we draw, yeah. I think we have to win. I think we have to win yeah. that. I think we will win it for the for, for the for the rest of the season, regardless of performances and results. This fan base has to stay united and together, like it was for the previous six months. It started curtailing a little bit the past two months, but as long as this fan base can hold together until the end of the season, I generally think next season will be better. It can if you be- lose, but- don't you think? Don't you think it's about the performance though? So let's say you lose a game three two or two one, but your team they really gave it a go. We just didn't take chances. A bit unlucky, deflected goal against us. You're like ah, a, 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 a dodgy penalty VAR decision against you. Maybe we miss a penalty. If we gave it a go, I think fans are on board with any club. I think when you play like you did against Fulham and against Wolves, fans just Absolutely disengage. Yes. Us. 100%. Look, if, 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 I think if, fans if, just switch off. It's but, like, but, but, but it's one of them where that should be the bare minimum. Like, a bit like when, when we heard all this, you know, with the Kulisevsky, you know, we won at life, we, we uh, you know, with the Chelsea thing. And yeah, we, we lost 4 1, but, but we kept running till the end. We kept trying to the end. I mean, like, I'm saying, I feel like, that's the fucking bare minimum. You're on you're, you're on 60k a week. I'd, I'd I'd fucking expect at least that. <laughs> like for crying out loud, like try is all we fucking ask. But yeah, but l- losing to F- Luton would be unacceptable in any way, shape, or form. It ain't gonna happen, man. It ain't gonna happen. I don't think we're losing to Luton. We won't That's lose getting to clipped. Win. That's getting clipped, guys. Yeah, I get clipped a week. What's I'm in the <laughs> We're gonna be. Yeah, we're gonna I be. Can't hear anything. <laughs> I'll take it one game at a time. I can't guarantee anything. And that game's not here yet? I'm not to, taking to be, it. To be fair, people in the comments make a good point. Luton aren't down and out. They're fighting for survival. They, they yeah. could a game. They could give us a game. But I want, and, still, and I sent you, 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 you a couple of weeks United ago. Really well. They came back against Man United but, really well yeah, and a couple of other teams really well. Didn't they they? should have beat United. Mm. They, they should. They, they were all over him in the second half, and uh, oh, up to so. the, and I said to you, I would not want to be playing Luton right now. Although they've what lost four out of five, or whatever the whatever the last five games were. I tell you what, they were unlucky in some of those games. They really were, and they are absolutely putting on some performances at the moment, even though they're not getting any points out of it. So if we come, turn up like Fulham, as well, didn't they? Yeah. From we ain't going to turn up like Fulham, man. We can't, well, Iggy. We can't. Um, if we do that, I tell you what, they, they could roll they us over. They deserve everything that comes their way. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I, I listen, by the way, me saying... You will be lying after that. Me, 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 say, me, me saying this doesn't disrespect Luton. I'm not disrespecting Luton. All respect to them because I think they've... Like, I think they've been unlucky. Some of the points, they should have more points on the board than what they've they currently have. But, but great. And it's not disrespect to them. I just think that following this game and two weeks of stewing it, um, I just think we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna come out of the blocks. Um, I think Luton are playing quite well there, Wiggy. And like, yeah. to be honest, I want them to come and play. It. I don't want them to just sit back and do nothing. They miss a lot of chances, though, Jackie. They, 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 they haven't got they haven't got that killer up front. They haven't got that yeah, killer up front. Yeah, that's true, Jackie. True. They haven't yeah. got that killer up front, man. If they had someone that could score at 10, 15 goals, I think I think they would be in a better position than what they currently are. I think they'll stay up now, especially after. Yeah. Yeah. I think Forrest are done. I hope they stay up. I hope to say it. I hope they stay up. Um, I, I want to ask you something. Actually, we've got we we we've all been saying April's a big month. Um, I got an email today. I'm sure it was announced publicly as well on platforms. Yep. Please be advised. Our Premier League home match against Man City has been rescheduled because of the FA Cup semi final that they're going to be playing in. When you look at the remaining games, the battle for top four, uh, obviously take take the top two games off. Fulham and West Ham uh, for Man United, sorry, for Aston Villa and Spurs, because we played those games. And our Chelsea game hasn't been rescheduled in there either. Yeah, so the Man City game, it was going to be Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, but now there's going to be a gap between Newcastle and Arsenal. Will they try and squeeze the Chelsea game in there then move Man City off to Liverpool? I don't know, but... No, it's going to be near the end of the season. No, no, because, because Chelsea, Chelsea um, are playing... Yeah, they're in the FA Cup. What, what they'll do is, and this is where I'm thinking, is they will squeeze the Chelsea game between Arsenal and Liverpool because that week we both don't have European football. 
So it will be Arsenal at home, Chelsea but away. If Arsenal, hold on. If Arsenal qualify for the semi-finals, they might have Europe. No, no, no. But that doesn't make a difference. The Chelsea game will be played that that week. Regardless. Oh, right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, sorry, and, sorry. And the Man City game will be played between Burnley and Sheffield. I think right? Burnley and Sheffield, yeah, exactly. So we're going to basically have Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Burnley, Man City will be our second to last game. So where we were looking at the last two games thinking, yes, Burnley and Sheffield, we now might have Man City <laughs> second to last game at our ground. Yeah, and, 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 and if a win secures the title for City, I'm rolling over. <laughs> Who do we you think's got the hardest run in there? Because I, 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 I think, guys, and Ours. listen, call me crazy, I think Man crazy. United are still in the race, you know. They are. By the way, that 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 FA Cup win is the kickstarter to the Ten Hag era. One hundred percent. It might galvanise them. Yeah, uh, but we've seen that before with Man United, where they do something big and then they just absolutely shit the bed the next couple of games. So they'll do a Spurs, right? By the way, we've got five hundred people watching this show tonight on yeah. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and X. Hit Thank you like. so much for tuning in. Appreciate you. Um, if you want to like, like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Also, Tottenham on tour. Ryan uh, with Brian Daigle, Ben and uh, everyone over there. Like, subscribe, follow the boys on Tottenham on tour. I'll put a link in the thumbnail for the show if you want to just quickly ping it, go across and like and subscribe. Um, yeah, I think... Let me ask a question because I think we had this conversation last week, but I can't remember if we did, so I'll ask it again. Are we better off not being in the Champions League next season because we can actually win the Europa? And teams that are in the Champions League, they can't drop into the Europa next season, which makes it easier for teams in the Europa. Also, um, some fans have said, no, we want to be in the biggest games with the biggest teams. That's where we want to be. Why are we settling for lesser? But then the other argument is, but what's the point of being in the big competition if you're just going to get humiliated? Yeah, yeah. It's just been a comp so where are you guys at with this? I right. think you don't know what Tottenham you're going to get. So I don't know whether you can actually make a prediction. Personally, I think it's too early for us to go straight into the Champions League, especially if we're looking to challenge for the league next year. Um, I don't think we'll be able to hold off two front, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> Still, can you, can you, is there any chance can invite that, that Miss, wrong, can, it. Can you invite that Miss Naughty on? Because I'd really like to um, uh, uh, talk to her about her comment. Uh, yeah, I, I would say the fans that want Champions, Champions League, League, Champions League yeah. are the <laughs> ones who unrealistically think we can actually win that competition. And if we're better off in Europa. I don't think we're good enough to win. Yeah, if, we don't, if we don't want Champions League football, what what are we doing? I, I don't know. Uh, what is it that we're doing it for? I, I, listen, no, we know fully well we're not going to win the Champions League. I agree with you, Mario. But if we're not doing it for the Champions League football or to be involved with the best... No, we're saying next season, not in the future. We want to be in Champions League in a couple of years. We're saying, are we better off So why are we bothered whether we win or lose and stuff like that? We can still make Europa even now. Like, because every fan's got every fan looks at it differently. Some some fans think no, Champions League. That's where we deserve to be. That, that's what I'm asking you the question. Like, where, what do you think? The Champions League result. is the money revenue, man, that you get from it. Uh, it's the money that you come from it. But the yeah, point, but what's the, the, man, the point? What's there? We go. I'm glad. It, what's the point? We spent over two hundred million pounds this season with no Europe. But what I'm saying, but you want the the point of Champions League football <laughs> really for a team that's not that doesn't have. The, the thing to go, you know, you're not Bayern Munich, you're not Real Madrid. Those teams are entered to win it. For for anyone else, really, it's two reasons. One is the money that you get from qualifying for it, and two to attract better players. That's essentially what it comes down yes. to. If you're nice. not going to do, if you're going to do, if you're not going to do neither of those two, there's no point in you being there. But that's for the club in terms of the board and management. That that's what they want. In terms of what the fans want, it, it it's the glamorized with Madrid. It's the glamorized with Bayern. It's going away. Yeah, you want to see them again. You want to see those matches, yeah, I, don't you? I would. I would, you, I would like you, to see you. Those you may. You, you may. Not, you, you, those matches, Brian, right? you you'll go to a game against Real Madrid. Nine probably nine times out of ten, we're going to lose it. But you're yeah, going because realistic. we're playing against Real Madrid. You want to go see those we're games. In the conference league, apart from the Vitesse game, when it was Conte's first game in charge. The staking was half at, half full for the games. 
for the conference. Now, but t- now listen to me what happened to that Vitesse game. I'll tell you now what happened. There. Those tickets were given to schools that were given to, 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 to all the community around here because they couldn't fill it up. When we signed Conte, you know what you, you know what Mr. Levy and, and company did? They went they back to those schools, took their tickets back, mate, and sold them. That's what they did. I and know. They opened up the top tier as well. I know what they happened. They went the and took. Tier, they went they? and took all the tickets back from the community. Ask the people that live in the community. Like I know about the community around there. They took all the tickets back from the community to put them all up for sale. That's what they did. That's Tottenham Hotspur for you. Don't get me yeah. started on things like that about that's the seniors right, and all that stuff that's been happening around the club, man. Because it makes my blood boil when I hear things like that. But I think we should that. Nah, man. What, what, Brian, how many conversations have we have? Uh, have we had? Was this? Did you ever think we would reach the final before? <laughs> you said, Iggy, did you ever think we'd reach the final before? Never, never. But, no, can I say, hold on, hold on. Hey, never, H, never in my lifetime did I think. One second, second, one second. See, this we is didn't a little win a bit out of We didn't win. A yeah, yeah, of course. We, 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 we got into the Champions League first time with Poch. We didn't get out of the group. The following year, we got out the group. Then we got out the group. The third year, lost to Juventus. And then it was the fourth year, we got to the final. So there was a, a progress. We're, we're saying... Going Mate, we didn't even win a Champions single away League. game that year. We didn't win a... Right. A, a, we didn't win. But the, point, the, but the point is, before we got to that final, there were stepping stones on the way over the years. Like, we were slowly getting better at Champions League. We didn't just go in and blitz it and get to a final. It took us four years of being in it every year. Whereas what, what some fans are saying, and I actually agree with them, I think, we are going from no Europe at all, rebuild, Turbo Werner up front with sort of Sun, into Champions League. Are we not better off? Maybe even Europa League. I know, I know the I'll Conference think, League. I'll I know, I know, no one wants that. But shouldn't we get a taste of Europe with these players first and give that a go before we go to the Big Boy League, where we are going to play the best of the best in Europe, especially with, with everyone line. saying, "Oh, it's a young high line against Real Madrid." Oh my gosh. This is like crash. Imagine Vinicius Junior running at Ben Davis. Mate, I'm smart. European managers are smart. European managers are tactically. Arsenal's been in Europe the last couple of years. Remember, they lost last year to what Dutch? No, they lost to Dutch. Sporting. Sporting. They lost Sporting. Sporting. Sporting, yeah. And Olympia, Olympiacos knocked him out the year before, remember, in the quarters. Olympiacos yeah. knocked him out the and, year. Then, and then also, this is year five in their process. Uh, 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 and so they ultimately bought the two players, Declan Rice, Havertz, Jorginho, they brought in the players to be the final icing on the cake. And right now, they're third favorite. Do you honestly think we're going to have a great summer and we become third favorite or fourth favorite? In the Champions League next um, next season, I don't think so. I mean, it would be a miracle. I mean, that would take us signing, you know, Mbappe, <laughs> you know, hijacking that deal to Real Madrid, or you know, or signing someone, uh, you know, up front that would put us, uh, you know, I mean, the good thing about going Champions League is you get the experience. But I want that experience to come with quality players, not players. Who are, not, who are not going to grow from their experience? And I'm talking about the Timo Werners and 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 the and the Johnsons of the of the world. But who knows? I mean, bro, bro, Brennan Johnson's missing open goals against Fulham, and you wanted to go up against Tapsoba of <laughs> European pedigree. I mean, yeah. I just Oli Skip gets outrun in in the midfield every single game he starts, and you want him to come up against Jude Bellingham. Do you know? Do you know what? Is this not more? Do you know what? Is this not more of a case of do we want Champions League because the money is better, and therefore we link money with potentially signing better players, as opposed club, to which, which has uh, never well, happened in the history of us, which has that, never happened in the history of Tottenham. That's or, the board. The money is to or, do with the board. Always. Well, yeah, but that's but that's but that's the argument with fans. When you say when they say yeah, but this but this is what fans say. A lot of fans say we want Champions League because of the money. But then exactly. is, is 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 the opposing is the opposing view? Well, we don't care about the money. We want to be in a competition. We've got more chance of winning. Therefore, the Europa Cup's better for us. So is this not an argument of money versus better chance of trophy? Is that uh, is that a better way? Money of money about? only comes when you get far into the competition. If we're all saying oh we're only going to get we're not going to get into the <laughs> 
out of the group stages, then the money's irrelevant. It's not a lot, right? is it? There's an extra two it's games next season. Yeah, but well. that's that's just that's just uh, money that the competition pays you. But in terms of what the club does around marketing, saying we're in the Champions League sponsors, then they do get additional money from that. But I, I think we're way past that, though, um, Stell, in terms of what what option is better. Because let's say we do get Champions League, right, and we do quite well in it. The problem is that isn't going to attract better players to our team because we're so damn it. Our reputation as a club that does well in these competitions in terms of actually winning them is so damaged and in the mud that, that we're the running joke amongst the elite players. Well, we'll, no we'll players be put, never it, want to come to us. We'll be putting the same pot as FC Young Boys or something like that. Yeah. The, the, it, the bashing it's, boys it's, of the Champions League. No, no, it, we're damaged goods. We're Spursy. That's what the that's what even the football players know us as. They we get bantered because of that. So, it's so it's our, our ability to attract these top players is is almost gone. Shame. Well, Mad Don't Madison think... came to us. Madison came to us. He's a, he's a, he's a guy relegated. Really good Madison was always coming. He was relegated. Yeah, but he still came to us. Yeah, but he's not okay. But Elite, would Elite. Madison get into? any of the top three teams. He he may make the squad, but I don't think he'll get in it in their actual I think, starting I think, I think he plays for Liverpool. A, a, a Madison form plays for Liverpool. Who's their number 10? Who's Liverpool's number 10 right now? Don't really have one. We do He's better than Sobber's no, line. He's better McCall than Sobber's line. They don't really play with a 10 Liverpool. They play over no, six. McAllister's eight. mustard. He's not getting ahead of McAllister's top. He's not getting ahead of him. No, look, Stel, we do this every time, right? If, if the top teams really wanted him, they would have gone and bought him and paid the money, like Liverpool did when they want, you know, whoever, right? It, it just doesn't happen. We, we, again, we've seen enough, many, 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 many years of this, right, to know that we just, as soon as a, a top team comes up against us, they pick the other team. End of story. Um, Cheer up, Maz. Cheers, no. man. <laughs> <laughs> He's ingrained. Uh, something I wanted to bring up that might affect us. It might not. Breaking news today, Nottingham Forest have been deducted four points. So they joined the club of, uh, well, they joined Everton so far. Profit sustainability charges, what happens now? Nottingham Forest has been docked four points. The breakdown of the four points was like this. Uh, they had three points deducted for each breach. Uh, they had three points deducted uh, because of the scale of the breach. And then because they played ball, they gave all the documents over and they worked with the authorities, they were given a two-point mitigation deduction. So from six, it went to four points. Now, what do we care? Villa have broken the rules. Man City, we're waiting on that because that's a bit more complicated. And Chelsea have broken these rules as well. So what was then said is that Chelsea have warned they face huge points, huge points deduction, worse than Everton for breaching FFP regulations. This is a bit different to um, Nottingham Forest because Nottingham Forest was profit sustainability, which is a Premier League rule. This is FFP, which is a UEFA rule. They can only get they can only get out of this big points deduction if they sell a hundred million pounds worth of talent this summer. Chelsea have been warned that they could face a huge points deduction if they do not sanction a hundred million or $128 million worth of sales in the summer. It goes on to say, mm -hmm. uh, Todd Bolly bought Chelsea uh, last year, two years ago after Bramwich effectively forced to sell the club when he was punished by the UK. Okay, yada, yada, yada. During the course of the takeover, the club has said it discovered that an incomplete, that, sorry, that there was incomplete financial information which was submitted to the authorities between 2012 and 2019. So this is the Roman era. And the club reported itself to the Premier League UA from the FA. Chelsea have re reached an £8.7 million settlement. So there has been some uh, existing um, punishment, but they've decided to, they've agreed with UEFA that it would be paid. But the long and short of it is they've got to sell players. Now, that See, could open I, up a window I, for us. I don't like, I don't like a, the way that they've been given an opportunity to sell players and reduce that deficit. That's what? FFP, though. The, the the profit the profit and sustainability the Premier League rules there's no there's no negotiation it's points fine 
the Chelsea, the Chelsea one is more involved, about breaking exactly. UEFA rules. It's the UEFA rules. So there's, aren't, it's, aren't Chelsea it's, also involved in the Premier League rules? Mm, but not I yet. I don't know. Because, I don't know. Because, because it's done over a three-year revolving window. So they've got to sell this window to balance it for the previous two years. That's right. Yeah, yeah. If they sell at the end of the summer, then it balances it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Premier League? Yes. Yeah. So they have been given an opportunity to get out if they sell no, no. twenty million. No, no, no. So, because yeah. if it's a road, Nottingham Forest have been punished for the last three years in a row. Yeah. Chelsea have the last two years, and if you add this year, once the end of their financial year comes, they're on course to break it. So to avoid it, if they sell, then they haven't breached the, the Premier League. And they will League. probably have to sense? sell early. So the year before... That's the reason Forrest got done, because they couldn't sell. It's done over three years, right? Yeah, yeah. The, so the what third year, two, the, years, the, the, two years they've got already, and you're telling me the year before they also didn't spend shit. It didn't money. come in. It didn't come in the year before. It came in after Agent two years. Cole Palmer, Enzo Fernandez. Yep, we're interested. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, no, we'll, Conor Gallagher? We'll, 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 Conor Gallagher, anyone? Anyway. No, don't worry. Oh, no, 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 for every uh, they went and they went out and bought 30 40 players, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But for every pr pound they were bringing in, they were getting rid of two pound more, they were 200 percent over their wage bill. That's I would be calling, meanwhile, meanwhile, we set up two friendlies at the end of the season in Australia, quid in, in. Yeah. in. Monday, oh, Monday. laughing, quids in after a long hard laughing. season. Let's let's get on a plane, go to Australia, and play a couple of friendlies against an English team, Newcastle. We're green, though, aren't we? Green? Newcastle. Where's where's that Daniel now, Levy? You, you want you want to go to an away picture? You want to go away to Newcastle? Let's go to Australia. <laughs> yeah, a, that's what I was talking about. By the way, buy Newcastle away. I meant the, I meant the Australia friendly guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know the Australia as much as I don't agree with this going away and all this kind of stuff. I think if you're going to build a team, you stay at home, you build that team, you do local stuff. But I think Australia is just a shopping trip. Yeah, oh, yeah it's we're going to buy. We're going to buy. Just, just we, whatever you like. You know, there's there's Castle plenty main, of talent out there. Also, main for yeah. it. The new Sonny. Yeah, new, the new Sonny. Mark King Min Jay's younger brother. Listen, if they're better than what we've got, snap them up. There is one last story I wanted to do. Um, so I'm not going to read it. I can't be bothered. But the Spurs Support Trust wrote a letter to the Premier League saying that the club have Lovely breached letter. a rule and they can't um, actually oh, take away the concessions <laughs> from the elderly. Another letter, Iggy. Uh, no, no, Another letter here. Yeah. Well, this one was to the Premier yeah. League. <laughs> but listen, the the, the 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 conversation I want I want to have isn't about the letter, right? We we know it's a waste of time. Oh, okay, the Spurs right. supporters trust is washed out, but they did hold up a banner in the away end at Fulham, something to say, you know, uh, look after our seniors. Or there was a protest banner. Save our However, seniors. some save our seniors. That's it. Some Spurs fans pulled it down, and there was a bit of a kerfuffle in the stadium over this. Now, they ripped Ryan, the huh? Say again. They ripped, they ripped it. the banner. They according to the banner down. Yeah, according to Crackers, they ripped the banner down. Don't yeah. understand. I mean, can you imagine the the the, the argument? S Screw you, seniors! How I, dare I, you I, do that? I, I mean, I don't, don't, the... I don't understand that argument or. Why to... Well, if you want to talk about banners, <laughs> bringing banners to games, I mean, <laughs> well, uh, look, fair, yeah. fair play to bringing the banners, but I, 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 who was it? Um, Just that... goes to show how Martin divided Pope? we are as a fan base. Yeah, yeah, Marie, it was it was the did, guy did, who was part of that. Did he say, um, did he, say he was going to bring it next game, or was he not? Because the idea is that you. Sp Keep this moment. Look, fair play to them for for trying to support something they believe in, which is brilliant. Um, but they have to do it over and over again, and you can't just be put. I mean, I've held out the Levy out banners at 
games all last season. Yeah. I've, I've I've had the banners ripped down from me. I've had I've had I've been spat at. I've been called. I've been said get out of the club. Like I've been for, physically forced. Like tried to be thrown out the ground. Um, and you just have to stick to what you believe in. And eventually, you know, people will get on your side. I've had you know Stell, you know, with the banners. Uh, the protests, they they will eventually come on side. You just need to wait and put the pressure on the board. At the moment, uh, the Save Our Seniors campaign is gathering momentum. Um, there is a Twitter page. I believe it's growing really well. Um, but sending all these emails off is just pointless. And that's, we've said this for ages, whether it's Levy stuff, whether it's anything, sending emails is pointless. If you want to do something actually do something on, on, on a serious note you sort of reap what you sow right and mm. and mm. you yep. know that the fans the fans have um accepted and tolerated this board for so long now that they've got the club they deserve pretty much um it's just uh, you know it's just everyone else that that doesn't put up with it that has to suffer now because of that come on lee let's hear it let's hear it you know what i i replied to crackers me? i replied to Tweet Levy. Oh, Levy. I was. Oh, I was just going to say uh, Ryan. I'd spit on you. Whatever, but yeah, I, I. We should all spit on him. I. I um. Just because we can. I. I um. I replied to Crackers to be saying, them. Crackers. With all due respect, fans had a chance to stand up to this ownership. Not you, because you did attend one of the protests. But fans in general, they chose to do nothing. Now they're getting upset and angry. Yeah, and pretty much what Maz said, you, you kind of got the club you wanted. This is this is the direction you wanted. So what what did, uh, what is did it, you... isn't it isn't it also that breaking point that we probably wanted to get everyone everyone else on this side? Yep. I, I have I the the have where's the where's the protest? We beat Villa 4 0, yeah. everyone forgot about it. Yeah, everyone exactly. Got, yeah. You know. Who's talking about yeah. tickets online right now for the two or three people who don't ever protest, by the way? No one. You got you got oh, Kat. It, 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 you got, you got Kat who used to run the trust. She's she's firing off left, right, and centre, but she didn't come to any protests. You got Martin who who took the banner at the Fulham game, but when we were protesting <laughs> against Levy, he didn't come because he was too busy setting up a protest stall thirty seconds up the road from us against the ownership of Newcastle. You couldn't write this. You you, you genuinely couldn't write this. It's like you won't protest against our owners, but 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 you part of the Spurs Supporters Trust, are protesting against the ownership of Newcastle. Like, what are we doing here, people? Brian actually went, Brian, do you remember, you went over there. Yeah. He, he went over to find out what's going on because this didn't add up. This is, this is happening on the high road. Imagine two protests, 20 fans. Literally, protests. literally about 50 metres apart. Like, and they were at, it, yeah, theirs maybe. wasn't really a protest. Theirs was a stall. I see, it was a um, stall, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and they were protesting, you know, because of the LGBT rights and, you know, the Newcastle ownerships and what they do over there, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, forget about what they're doing. The Premier League will deal with that. And the Premier League have dealt with it. And the, and the Premier League have done their due diligence to say, yeah, they can own the club. No matter how many pro... Why don't you come join us and actually stand up for our watch club? out <laughs> oh, the crap owners we've got to try and sort <laughs> them out? Um, Jeff, protesting is not pointless. Protesting when fans don't protest is the problem. The problem with Levy out is no one attended it. Like, no one protested. Like, do you no know what? This guy problem. messaged me today, right? He's saying to me, why do you bother? You're wasting your time. It's been proven it doesn't work. I said, where's the proof? He goes to me, protests have never changed in ownership. And I said to him, what club has protested in numbers? Boycotted games. Done walkouts. Who? Name your club. No. Newcastle, goes to me, Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle. Man United, United, United. Blazers have handed over the power. So, 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 so he then said to me, "No, I'm talking majority." I said, "Dude, you haven't tried, and you're making claims it doesn't work. It's like saying my car is slow. How do you know if you've driven it? Drive it, and then make your claim. You're making claims without doing it. And I just think that what is such an easy get out when fans say it doesn't work." You haven't tried it. You're in no position to make that claim. It's it's a false it's a false narrative that they. It's create. an easy get. It's, it's an easy get out. I it's cowardish. It's, it's, I think it's cowardish. It's, I think it's a very cowardly approach. Say, oh, it doesn't work. 
just so that maybe you don't have to show up or you don't have to step over the line and take that action yourself. Whereas some of us Stella's are right, they're cowards. A hundred percent. See, those fan clubs, it's unified. And why is those other clubs all unified? Because they've tasted winning and they want that back. They they believe in the integrity of their club. Whereas our club, we, like I said, we, we just have, have a new breed, Mari. We just about the new uh, beer pour thingy, whatever you we, call it. We're the glass right pours them upside down. Come to the stadium. And we're excited about excited football, which, like I said, I don't see. I'm, I'm not entertained <laughs> right now. Uh, and and so this is and yeah. And crackers, you yeah, prefer good football over silverware. Whereas in United and these cl other clubs, they want to see, they want to see silverware. They want to see success. They want to see ambition. They want to to see it. And my we have my, 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 my question is. What is the tipping point of this fan base that will have us protest? Does it take being regulated? I mean, like, I want to know, like, what is the tipping point for this club where everybody's unified, unified and say, hey, you know what? We're going to protest. What is, is, we won't Another even, 25 we won't years. Even, we won't even stand up for our old. The, the our anniversary old. of 50 years without a trophy, that'll do it. Our old fans who yeah. are getting pushed out of football, yeah, probably, and we don't really want to do that much about it. The thing is, JP, on that, we're all going to get to that point. Every single one of us are going to get to the. To, to be, one day, we'll all be seniors, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's going to happen to all of us once we get to that age. I also so the young, the young people that are saying, "Well, you know, I, it is what it is," I, we I, will I, get I, there. The young and people are dealing with it just as hard. I mean, I don't want to be blunt about it, but the older generation were able to have a mortgage at 23, 24, pay it off and still where and were able to move out, pay for a house that was 10 times yeah, yeah. cheaper. Where it could all be achieved. It was all achievable. Yeah, right. This is where they came to the protest called William, right? It came up from Hertfordshire way. <clears throat> so he had some kind of a cheap travel ticket as a student. Yeah. Right, so it wasn't it wasn't big money. He came to the protest, and you know most of the protesters either go into the game or they go to the pub, whatever they do. I said, "Didn't we do that?" Train went back straight back. I remember I was there with he you. Doesn't get the train straight back. I said, "You got the train just to protest and go back." Yeah. He goes, yeah, "Yeah." But why don't you come yeah. to the game? He goes, "I can't afford it." I go, "Oh." He goes, "I've never been to a game, dude." I wanted to cry. Yeah, and I'm thinking, this stadium. guy, this guy, 18, can't afford to go to a game. Never been Become. to a Spurs game. He's travelled to protest, and he's getting mugged off by fans for saying, "Why are you protesting?" And I, this is this is when I began to lose heart with a lot of things at Spurs. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised this senior this senior citizen uh, ticket <coughs> fiasco is happening, <clears throat> and fans aren't doing something in numbers. The heart isn't there. I I I, I discovered it during the protests. So when when people online say, "Oh, we held up a banner and it got taken down," I don't give a shit. Because you, when you had the chance, you didn't give a shit. Now, when now you want what? Now you you're want right, and, and, and it leads. <laughs> and and let's still, you're right, and and it absolutely leads to to a greater point. I, I get really frustrated when the older fans defend the regime. People like uh, Crackers, for example, not because I dislike the man. I don't know the man. He seems a good chap, right? But I don't know, in, does he in, defend in, the regime? Well. <laughs> Well, like he certainly uh, didn't. He, 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 he doesn't. He doesn't defend the regime. He doesn't defend the regime. Okay. He doesn't. Uh, let me take that back. I think his messaging is very conflicted. If I'm honest, Chris right? Cowling. You should use Chris Cowling. He's the example. No, no. I, I'm specifically talking about the older fans, right? Because the, the problem is, in how long are they willing to wait? Five years time for us to win something? Six, seven? How, what, what, how many? Ma how many more managers? Another ten years? They they will be nearing their retirement. They may be dead in ten years' time. So 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 why aren't they getting angry? Do they really well, want to live out the rest of the years as, being what we are now? Man, do you know, what, got, do you know do you, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, just to say, man, someone got angry at me. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I went on a big rant saying I would take uh, a teacup, any cup, any any trophy. <laughs> I would like I would I got I would take anything. And they're like, 
who are you to demand? I said, man, I've been rooting for this team since 07. It's been, what, 17 years. One trophy. And that was not in the middle of the 17 years. That is the beginning of the 17 years. Because I'm thinking, okay, more to come. I've been waiting for so long. So long, long, long. You guys even longer. Actually, no. The last one has been 07, 08. We've been waiting for so long, long, long. Like, if we're a big six club, of course I'm going to demand trophies. 17 years. Five years. Okay. 10 years. Eh, 15 years. Eh, about to be 20. It, I'm demanding. Laurie, it's I'm not demanding. even that. I want trophies. I still... want trophies. This is too long. And you know, Mari, we were People just can't... About... People can't speak like that and question why you want to win trophies and in the same breath say that we're a top six club. Because exactly. top clubs wow, wow. win trophies. Bingo. You know, we are you not know, a top you know, six we, club. We if I was a Burnley fan, I would expect, man, it's going to be a miracle that we get a trophy. We will have to pull a Leicester uh, right. a season uh, to yeah. be able to win a trophy or be like uh, the, the last underdog team to win the FA Cup. Um, I forget Again. the name of it. Um, um, I can understand that. If I was an AFC Rochdale fan, right? I have friends in Rochdale, you know, or, or you know, or Mil Milnrow FC, I can understand that. But I'm a Tottenham fan, top big six. Are you telling me the best we could do We're the is win the trophy ticks. in 24 years? And I have to wait 17? We're the bottom of the ticks, Mari. We're well, we're well at the bottom of that six. But look, bottom line is, we were, in one of those protests, before. in one of those protests, I think Stel and, and Ryan might have been there as well, opposite a club shop, I spoke to, it, um, I wouldn't say elderly, but they were like in, in, in their 50s. And they said, that, I said, we was chatting, it goes, they want to know what was going on. And and there was a couple, it, it was a, uh, there was a couple going to the game. And, and they said, you know, I said, how are you seeing this? Like, you're a little bit older. How, how was your he goes, look, for us, look, yeah, we know we we we, sh we we should try and compete for trophies, but it's like you know, it's beyond that for them in the sense that for them, it's just they want to go to a game, be entertained, watch a bit of football, have a drink, and then go home. Like, that's their Saturday, and they, yeah, they, they will that's, carry that's on. Just... That, 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 that is their general outlook, you know. That, and I'm not saying that it, it may be the same for a lot of people. Look, I, I want to go and watch a bit of football. Have a drink, enjoy my Saturday afternoon, and then go home. That is a lot. But of for me, then, but for uh, me, uh, for me, Iggy, that's spitting on the history of Tottenham. When you say for that, me, Iggy, that's as good as spitting on the history. Uh, of are Tottenham. you saying? Are you yeah, saying, saying if, Maz, Are you saying if you want to do that, go go and watch your local football team? They're the same. No, I'm not saying that. Club. All I'm saying is, is that, is that you, you know, in life you've got to honour your history and your parents and your grandparents and stuff like that, and them and the team you support, and them thinking, oh well, you know that. No, sorry. What well, do you think, like Birkinshaw and Bill Nick and and all our great players think this way? They don't. They did not think this way. And, and there's a guy in, in the chat, right? Richard Knight. He says, I'm 67. I've witnessed 14 trophies, uh, nearly 25 years of one trophy. I have higher standards than this dross. It's damn right. Bingo. Damn right. The guy He's a dying breed. Him, yeah. and Graham, him and Graham are a dying breed. Do you know what? Do you know what winds me up with these fans, right? The ones that say, you know, I just want a day out, a bit of entertainment. You are the same fans that hate the word Spursy. You literally go and say, I hate Spursy. I hate we're called bottle jobs. But why do you hate it? What what do you care? Uh, do, do you know do you know how you know all of these fans are full of shit? And I know and, and, and why they're so hypocritical. Because if Arsenal go and win the league, they'll all be gutted. But why? You don't care about trophies, right? You're not bothered, you don't want it. So you can't get upset. If Poch lives, if Poch lifts the FA Cup with Chelsea, you can't get upset if Arsenal win the league this year. You no can't. Point, How can you be upset by the rivals winning silverware if you don't care if we don't win them? I don't understand that. I'm, that's one thing. I, whenever I say it to them, it's almost like I didn't. I didn't even ask the question. They don't know what to say. Mm. It's all you want everything. Like your, what's the word? Your whole cake and to eat it, but it doesn't work that way. I don't. They, they, they've lost it. They've lost the plot. 
And one but thing I want to say to you is about all everyone. It's not everyone who's in their fifties, right? Because I'm there. Ah, listen, I'm approaching it as well. So no. I think that you know, it's not. It's not. I wasn't. It was just that's that's the age that they you were can at. Be eight, thinking, there's eighteen. You know, 30, if you guys are not bothered by it, then, then there's all age group. If, they say, JP, I just want to be you're in your fifties. I'm just approaching it. What I'm saying is, if we are not bothered by it, if we are not bothered by the senior thing, which is Listen, it's our next stage in life. That's what we're I'm eventually. About it. Yeah. But see, if we, who the fuck is going to be bothered by it? And that's what I'm saying. I don't. There's, there's. No, do you know what it is? There is nothing at the moment. In there is nothing um, that this club does. I'm talking about the whole thing with the seniors, the six percent. Um, as you know, the list is endless, right? There doesn't seem to be anything that this club does that unites the fans to say, do you know what? You lot have gone too far. And, far. and this enough is this is, is this is one of the things. It's I no longer was, a, a lot. Then, then, I'll, then I'll read. Then I'll read. Then I'll read tweets and I'll read um, messages on social media saying things like, you know, this is no longer about Levy in and Levy out. This is time to unite. This is the senior thing has gone too far. And then and then at the first instance you have with a banner at Fulham, it gets ripped apart. You're like, you know what? I don't know what it will take. To fans say, you know what, you too far. What, what, what are we uniting behind? I honestly think this, this, this would have been the point. I thought. I thought at least those fans. My thoughts are exactly, enough, JP. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with because you. we have a group that says Levy out and blah blah yeah, blah, I, blah blah. I'm with you. I but thought now, this would have been it, but we, not even. We respect that. our elders, right? As Matt said earlier, like basically, you're saying to all of the people who have seen the club through thick and thin. Through all the trophies, all the Bill Nick days and stuff. Because you know what? I can take your ticket and get a full price for it over here. And people are not infuriated by that. I don't understand. Also, also, you know, it's, it's, uh, JP's people, I forget, like, they've, they, like, Ryan is like, follows the team home and away, man. Physically goes to games home and away. You're like, he, that's going to be him in, in 20, 30 years, 40 years' time, whatever. That, do you know what I mean? Oh, and then all of a sudden, no, 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 all, no, no, all I'm going to know, yeah, uh, but oh, someone's whine, someone's going to tell you, when you get to that age, say, mate, that's it, nah, you, you know, you don't have uh, these, 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 uh, I, I don't get it, Graham, Graham, who's watching us right now, he's, uh, you know, I, I hate he's to honest. think what it must be like for him, he's been travelled all over the Europe to follow Spurs, and now they're saying, nah, mate, Iggy, yeah. Iggy, I'm jealous. You you talk about mate, I'm, 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 I can't believe I'm, it, man. I can't Iggy, believe what I'm hearing. Iggy, Iggy, at least you got to see the team win the FA Cup. I'm jealous. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yes, but Murray, but what 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 the club is doing now is saying yeah, my TV was we, black we, and white. What yeah. the club are saying to people like Graham, who's following us right now, is saying, mate, we we don't need your kind of fans anymore. Yeah. We need this new crop of uh, modern. Uh, whatever way you want to, I don't know what to call the next generation okay. now. Day, yeah, day, I, 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 day that's customer. what we want. We want, we want people that visit, they spend, and then they go. Like people from around the world are Spurs fans, like yourself. They want fans like yourself, Mari, to come over to 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 North London, go to the club, spend because you you're you're not you're likely to come here one time, and you're not probably going to be there for the next two three years. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to think, fucking hell, when am I going to get a chance to go to the Spurs club shop, to Spurs tour, the the the, the, the ceiling, oh, the yeah. roof? We were talking about early on. Yeah, <laughs> you do all these things. When it, so these these are the fans that they want. They want the likes of yourself to come because you're going to spend big because you're not going to come in in the same way that Ryan does it every week. Yesterday, the magic of the FA Cup and United oh, having a down a oh, down oh, season, but their fans were going nuts. Oh, because they upset Liverpool. They came back not once, twice, three times. And yesterday, I'm sitting there feeling jealous. I'm like, man, I just wish I had that emotion. I wish I was on the watch along. Coventry. Yeah, Coventry. It's a bit different up north, Mari. Coventry. Up north is a bit different. <laughs> We're going nuts because we just nice we defeated. We're going to, the, we're going it to is, Wembley. Man. It is. I'm Arsenal, Arsenal were partying when they knocked out Port in the Champions League, dude. Any team, I think, any team that gets to the last stage of competition where you're competing and you're right in the mix and you win it, you're buzzing. That's what it's about. With us, yeah. we I haven't got a clue about the moments. 
And the Champions Cup. League, the Champions League final. Even that Carabao Cup we lost under Jose, we felt nothing. Yeah, we, and, knew. But we, we knew. didn't feel nothing because because Mourinho Why Mason was sacked. in charge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. if Mourinho was at that we, game, we, we felt something before the buzzing. Southampton game. Then he got sapped, and it was like, "Oh, well, no, that's that. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what happened." <laughs> the, the lead, the lead up. <laughs> you're having that. you're having an owner and a manager arguing about what teams to select three days before, four days before Southampton, and the guy's like, yeah, "Fuck the won. Southampton game. I want to win the cup." And the other one's saying, "No, fuck the cup. I want us to get top four. You're like, mate, these well, wars are happening really four days before a, fi- a cup final. It is it, it, nowhere else that would happen but Tottenham. Nowhere else. But do we agree, though? Do we agree, though, all here tonight, regardless, yeah, we've won in life? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, oh, 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 guys, guys, please stay away from... Every Zeta day. Um, yeah, let's not talk about a group of people and support. Um, that's OB, um, if you could... Stay away from that conversation, please. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't talk about overseas fans, bro. Um, Ryan, if you yeah. got, do you know what? I'm going to wrap it up anyway. We went for over two and a half hours. Uh, Ryan, you can go first because I know you got to shoot. Uh, yeah. Your channel, say your last bit. Go yeah, uh, Tottenham on tour. Um, we got we got cockle to do Monday to Fridays with uh, Ben and whoever comes on. I should be there Friday morning. Don't start work till Friday afternoon, so I, I should be there. Um, we got the usual throw-ins that pop up. Uh, Brian's one today was excellent, talking about the Save Our Seniors and everything going on from top to bottom, including the uh, the trip to Australia. Um, so check that out. Um, we got our usual um, Tuesday show with Ben and um, David. So go check that out. And obviously our match reviews, me and Brian uh, doing our match reviews after every game. And obviously uh, Andrew Management. Um, which won't be around, obviously, since this international break. Um, but yeah, so we'll pop up um, doing our cockroach doodle doos for the rest of the uh, on Friday, and uh, probably the throw-ins if there's any news that pops up. Big up to Ryan. I'm, I'm going to share Brian's videos. I did promise Brian I would do it. I'll share it on our socials after this. I've just been busy since I promised Brian. Um, I'll put it on X, Facebook, and on the community page of our YouTube channel. Uh, Murray. I saw that video. Right, is that yeah. the one he did tonight? Uh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good video. Hey, that was that was guys. If you if you get the opportunity to go and look at it, go and go and do so. It was, it was actually quite a touching now, huh? video. It was a, it was a real touching anything. video. Um, uh, you you find it that they I can't remember what it's titled, but they go something. And but you guys go and have a look. It's the most recent video of uh, Tottenham on tour, and it's got Daigle speaking about Spurs and how he views it. And it was actually it wasn't angry. It wasn't a, it wasn't a rant or it wasn't like, but it was quite an emotional one. I, I saw it was mm. like I could see it. I could hear it in his voice, and um, it was quite. I was actually going to message him later on, um, but yeah, um, go and have a look I'll at just, it. Really, I'll just video. put a link in the chat, guys. Uh, put, watch the Daigle video. Right, it's in mm. the chat. Click on it. Go for it. And I know we like mm. what I would say is obviously once we're wrapping up now and stuff, but do hit that like button on your way out. Yeah, just course. give us a little love. Yeah, don't be a Levy. <laughs> be a be a shake, Mansoor. Um, Lee. Simple. We've got be our a Todd Bowley. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that. <laughs> Someone's got a soundboard. Back to you, still. Um, should we, should we, should we, what should I call you? Miserable Maz, Negative Maz, Toxic Maz. What do you prefer? I get them all. So the rain one. cloud. F- F- rain F- cloud. Yeah, yeah, rain cloud. That's I, can, I, can, I, can only, I can only apologize by how negative I've been today. Um, I don't think you've been negative, man. I think you've been uh, as most bad, positive. Bad, you bad, bad. It's, it's really dawned on me that our next manager is actually going to be Ryan Mason. And I don't know what's worse. <laughs> Sign, <laughs> signing... <laughs> So, signing, a, signing Turbo Wiener yeah. or knowing that Ryan Mason is going to be our next manager. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matt, Maz, you know what's dawned on me? For so many years, yeah, watching watching Spurs, the managers were always older than me. Now it's getting to the point that I'm it's becoming true. older than the managers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when you know time flies, mate. Yeah. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> I'm older than the managers now. No, uh, uh, just to summarise, uh, you know, I've, I've been... I'm, I'm, 
you know, I was sort of done really after the Chelsea game only because I saw quite early the on, signs. Man. Yeah, the signs of of things repeating once again, and and as the the games and the season has gone on, I've just been seeing more and more warning signs, and I think I'm at that point now where I just can't see beyond what's happened in the past. So, so yeah, I'm not not happy at the moment, but um, you know, if we win, if we have a good strong end to the season, I might be a little bit more optimistic. JP, uh, what should I say? So we'll obviously be back in a couple of weeks in inside the stadium. Listen, guys, like we have to, we have to get together, whoever it is, make noise in that stadium, stand up against kind of getting rid of like our faithful fans, six percent increases, senior concessions getting wiped out and stuff. Make a noise, make an effort, make make a stand at something. Like literally, this is something that you guys should feel bad about that your dad, your granddad, or stuff like that maybe can't afford to like go down to Spurs anymore need to have that voice in there these guys can't just uh, don't allow this to happen like these guys can't really dictate who they want supporting the football club and who they want inside the football club it, club it shouldn't be allowed i want you there and i want you guys to make noise inside the ground and out i'm brian, out do you, you, any, do you know back to me do you, brian do you know if there's going to be any banners at the brian the next... you mean ryan yeah sorry ryan big pardon uh, yeah, um, I'm thinking about it. I don't know yet. I think I'm trying. I'm, I was thinking, can I go for a whole season without pulling a banner out? And then I brought how, one. How do me. you smuggle them in? I just put them in my coat. All right. Like, that, like, <laughs> honestly, like uh, Daniel's as as... watching. Donna's yeah. watching. Donna loves me. It doesn't matter. None Donna's of the banners about tonight. her yet. Donna's been missing tonight. I'm a bit worried. It's not a good sign. No. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not difficult to get banners into the ground. Obviously, if it's a big, massive banner like, um, like you, you still seen it, I think you've all seen you know, the massive, uh, the, the uh, profit before glory one that, that, but the little, the little ones where you can just fold them up and put them in your pocket, easy, and then not that expensive. Um, wow, it's like 20 25 pounds. Biggie, everyone should get a banner. That says uh, "Save Our Seniors," like the little one. Just hold it out up, like before the game. The Spurs supporters trust should really be organising something with the fans, but then I, I guess they're not going to do anything. They're not. Then, but then if we try and do it, no one listens to us. We get we get blasted. Something like something like I mean, and and, and, I, and I'm not calling I'm not calling them out by the way, but something like um, what is it uh, Spurs flags of um. The Tottenham fat flag page that's been trying to organise the tifos and get in the fundraisings. Like if they organise something like for fundraising towards banners for this six percent thing, could, could that be something like fans chipping oh, in? Something? Mate, can you imagine the South Stand the tifo? Save our no. The oh, oh, is, don't oh, those tifos oh, have to get approved by the club though? Then the club yeah, has to. The the club have to get by club. Nothing like, but, but 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 something like on the side in terms of like. Um, Putting money together to like get a hundred banners that you can hand out to people to hold up before the game. That's, got that's what you should say. But it could, it could literally, Ryan, though, it could have the Spurs flag and we'll all say, yep, we'll have the Spurs flag like that. And then when you flip the cards over, <laughs> save our seniors. It would never get approved. It has to be something that, no, that it has to be short and sweet. It's like 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 something. It, it can't be something massive. It has to be something small that everyone can just fold up and put in their pockets and then hold up. Or like similar to what we do with the banners with, with, that I do, you know, and just hold them up before the game, or and then at half time and then at full time, just to get the message across. Because you know, it, it gets seen. You, it, the the classic one, obviously, is the Everton away game last year where I held out the uh, they know the cost of everything, but the value of. The value of nothing banner you know it was seen by sky sports it was on the sky sports app it was seen all over social media so um this is the banner this is the banner save our seniors say no to turbo wieners that's the one wait if we got a tifo of that i would i would drop a fair bit of money to help that I'll, I'll definitely get, I'll fund the Tifa. Um, Iggy, 
your final words, my man. Have a good uh, international break. <laughs> so, no, no, listen. Um, let's let, let, in in the hope that we see the season out in the best way possible, whatever, whichever way that that may be. And then, and then, like you guys uh, manifested earlier on, um, it does really come down to what happens in the summer and how we set up for the second season under range. After which we. Um, we, we, I will certainly be a little more vocal um, than, than what I have been because um, the picture, listen, at, at the back of the head, we all say it. We know it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. But you have to <laughs> let it play out. You have to let it play out under Ange and then see, 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 see how that goes. And then, and then judging Mary, but we've got a hell of a fixture list coming up under, under after the international break. So embrace yeah. it and enjoy it. That's embrace it, saying. enjoy, embrace it, enjoy it, and then let's not fucking turn on the manager, man. That's what I'm saying. Um, Carl Walker, I think Carl Walker. I lost it. Carl. KPV, KPV yeah. man, just KPV. Yeah, KPV. Yeah, big no, up no, KPV. It's eleven at night. KPV, big up for your uh, membership, soul boy. A couple of super chats, big up to you, A user. Thank you very much, Wayne Holland. As always, big up. One of our own, Matt. Big up, A yeah. user again. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Um, to everyone to watch tonight, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if it's your first time, now you've got a taste of Tottenham away. If you come back. Yeah, you're one of our you're trapped. Um you're hooked. You're hooked. Uh make sure you like and subscribe to the show. Uh the link in the thumbnail for Tottenham on tour. I've just put Brian Daigle's video up on our socials if you want to watch that as well. It's also in the link in the comments. Other than that, we're done. Uh we'll be back on uh, Murray, do you show this week or not? Yeah, we're going to do a special um North London's hours where we are going to pick since we're on international break. We're going to get roasted in that show. That's yeah. what's going to happen. We're, yeah. gonna get we're actually going to pick out our ultimate international. Like Arsenal, Mari won't run away. <laughs> we're yeah. going to pick our our international team, our ultimate international team. So it's going to be interesting in who we have and stuff. So we've got a couple of players who I'm going to have from the past and current. So. Yeah. Mari's doing that show on Thursday. I'm going live with Matt on Friday. There'll be no weekend shows because there's no football, and then we'll be back next Monday preparing for the <laughs> we uh for the for the for the Luton game we'll be discussing. So thanks as always. Pick yourselves up, everyone. Enjoy, and we're out of here. Thanks Leave me out. Leave me out. The first game we look game for, Robbie. For Robbie. Them away, them away. When we got them away, them away. them away, them away. When we got them away, them away.